Well, it is time for our third matchup, and this one is a big one. This is pinned to be probably the match of the day. Team Liquid, they take on VP in a very important first best of three. This is where they get to kickstart their venture for the hammer. Some teams come into this tournament in their opening game, it's against, oh, maybe we get to play you know, an APAC team, some teams that are not necessarily the favorites. VP and Liquid, two teams that people expect to go quite far through this tournament, have to play each other in the very first round. I think we're set up to have a great game here today, Manic. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be a great game overall as well. I mean, especially for VP coming out of Atlanta, they didn't have the strongest showing and they were losing to a lot of very good Brazilian teams, one being NIP and the other being W7M. Now you're going against a powerhouse and a juggernaut team like Liquid. So in that sense, you got to you gotta come together as VP and realize here like what your mistakes were going against those Brazilian teams and how you're going to fix this going into this game or we might be seeing the same result going into the future. All right, well, looking at the head-to-head -to, -head to kickstart the proceedings, uh, I don't really know how much I want to note here other than probably the LAN appearances is the, the big one for me. Yeah. Um, just the significant difference, obviously. You know, that two years uh, is a long <laughs> time. Mean, uh -huh. it's, 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 uh, it, it's, there's a lot there to, to kind of gain. Well, I mean, there's a thing to note with Liquid 2 coming in in 2018. They've attended literally every single invite leading up to this date. Yeah. That, that's important coming into this event alone because these players are very well-rounded and know what the environment feels like. And for Virtus Pro as well. I mean, it says that it's their first SI, but you got to remember, four out of five of these players were in the Six Invitational Grand Finals not too long ago. They lost that one, so they're looking for a bit of revenge here. You know the players are hungry to get back to that Grand Final stage. You can kind of hear how hungry the Liquid players are. That's for damn sure. <laughs> I mean, I just love the environment and the atmosphere of SI. Everything is just, it. it's just going. It's just going like this is it. This is this is the beast. This is the main event. This is the event that you want to be attending as a siege player, as a professional player. And when you make it here, the goal is to win it. That's it. And look, there should be nothing on their minds other than winning it. So Absolutely. let's go ahead and start talking about VP, the team that really for us, we, we do have a couple of questions about. I mean, they've got some some very solid uh, performances throughout this year. But is it is it amalgamating amalgam? <sighs> So, I mean, my thing that I even just said in the beginning of the intro with VP is VP have, they're, they're a dominant team. They are a strong team in the EUL. My biggest gripe with them is that they play an old version of Siege still, which is sure. a very strategic based Siege, where, where the meta right now is very in your face and it mm. really caters to the Brazilians that are, have always been aggressive for as long as we can remember. And again, touching up where I was saying, you know, they struggled in Atlanta against the Brazilian teams of NIP, of W7 again, and now you're going against Liquid. That's, they're going to be in your face just as much as those other two teams. So it's a matter of, did you use those three months or the time off to figure out what you needed to do? Are you gonna bring out things? Cause we also know that their map pool hasn't been that strong at all. So it's a matter of, are you coming into this event, coming into this event knowing that you needed to fix these things, that you are gonna be playing against these powerhouses, or are you gonna try to continue to force that same play style? Yeah, Virtus Pro, I mean, they're not gonna be happy with the two majors they played this year. They're not gonna be happy with Copenhagen. They're not gonna be happy with Atlanta because they didn't make main stage at either of those tournaments, despite coming very close. And I think if you look at some of these star players, the people we expect to pop off, there are some good performances. I think Dan's played really well this year. I think Posh is really uh, contributing a ton to the team. But then you look at players like Joystick. Three out of the five games that they played in the Atlanta Major, Joystick had three or fewer kills. Some of these players have not been very consistent, which in the past, if we're talking history, have led yeah. VP to their championships. Well, it's a, it's a big task. And the first matchup going up against Liquid of all teams, this is where the conversation might change a little bit. Said they've struggled in the past. Is this the team that is going to kind of open up their day with the first three? I mean, again, it's when you look at Liquid, when you look at their entire history, and I could spend tons of time on their entire history throughout 2018 and up until now, they've always been top four contenders. They've always been a juggernaut of the Brazilian region. And now you're here on your home turf, a fan favorite. Yep. You have all of that leading into making it to the playoffs, making it to main stage and having that hype all around you. I mean, I can only imagine with players such as Paulo and Ness, the one of the longest standing duos, one of the best standing duos to do it, that they're going to be as hungry as ever coming into this game and are really going to put up a performance that we haven't really been seeing throughout the regular stage of 2023. Certainly. Comments? I mean, I think that for, for Team Liquid, this is a team that we've seen kind of have some good moments and have some rough moments. Obviously, they're here because they made it all the way to the grand finals of the Copenhagen Majors. But in stage two, they fell off the face of the map. They're honestly looking somewhat fraudulent coming into this tournament. Would you agree? 
Would no, you agree? No, I, th I think it's a fluke. I think it's. Uh, I think it's. I think some teams have their ups and downs, but overall, I mean, I, I wouldn't write off Liquid in that regard by any means. I think they are still just as much of a powerhouse. You just, you know, you, you, you run into hiccups. That, that's very normal for a strong team. It's just a matter of fixing, and I believe they've had a lot of time to adjust and make those things that they need in order to have the successful run here at SI. All right, I'm going to jump in right now because you've actually triggered, without knowing, you've triggered a hidden mini game. That's right. It's fraud or flukesters. How this is going to work, both of our incredible talent will have 30 seconds, only 30 seconds, to determine I get my why they are either frauds or they're flukesters. Who would like to go first? I'll jump in. Yeah, you'll go first. 30 seconds, remember. That's Wrong. all you've got to okay. save your point. Okay. When oh. you're ready. Thank you, Manic. Well, I'll only need 30 seconds because Team Liquid have struggled immensely throughout the second half of this year. They've gone through through the Atlanta Major uh, and failed to qualify already to that big event. Throughout Stage 2, they won only a single map in Tier Good 1 thing. official competition. They struggled so hard, and if you watch their games, they couldn't get those attacks going. Early round attack, they struggled to find those opening picks. Looking for an opening pick from Team Liquid was like trying to find a Jinxie stream where he doesn't take his shirt Five off. Seconds. It just wasn't happening. Liquid have really failed on the attacking side of things throughout the second stage, and their map as well has been so, so poor. Oh, you got time for. Really no, really sorry. Hey, no. He's He's Don't worry. They couldn't hear anything over uh, over the mumbles. It's okay. 30 seconds is all he had. We'll actually do a Twitch, uh, a little Twitch poll at the end of this. Uh, you cheat. Laxing, are you ready? Well, I'm going to keep it shorter than that. I won't okay. even need the full 30 seconds. You ready? I we'll start now. Okay. So given their SI placements in general, again, coming into 2018, they placed 9th, 12th, 2018. 2019, they were 5th, 8th. 2020, they were 9th through 12th. 2021, they were 2nd. 2022, they were 5th, 6th. 2023, they were 13th, okay. 16th. They got worse, but given by that algorithm that is currently happening, this has to be a first place finish. And I'm also chalking that up also to my career at SI, whereas I won one. Five. I played, Then I got knocked out in groups. Then I placed in the middle. Then I placed in top three. three and that's and all we've got six, time for. And, yeah, that's it. That's all we've got time for. Look, I... <sighs> I don't know. Did, did we sell it enough? I don't. It was 30 seconds Wait, enough? Okay. The thing is, we're talking about SI. So I'm scratching their entire stage. This is stage. extra time. This is extra time. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying where this came from. I'm just saying where this came from. I'm scratching the this entire stage, the entire 2023. This is SI. And given their performance of making every single SI, this has to be a first place finish. Okay. That's like, look, I understand the math. I think you're wrong. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and have a look at the map <laughs> videos. Let's dive into this one because this will determine quite a bit. Uh, who wants to take okay. this? All right. That's... Well, Clubhouse first okay. pick coming through from Liquid. Historically, the VP map. They used to love Clubhouse. Now, they have had some rocky losses uh, in the past. They lost to BDS in a 7-1 game recently. So That's... I understand where my, maybe Liquid want to go for this. And they have had some close games on it um, to begin with. And then uh, Oregon as well. Very obvious pick for VP. Yeah. You saw it on the graphics, Absolutely. their favorite map. If it's open, they're going to pick it. That's not a shocker. And then Border. There are two maps that VP have historically never wanted to play. Those were Night Haven and Border. We were assuming with best of threes at SI, we would see one of those come into play. Turns out it's Border. I really hope we get to see VP on that map. Well, it goes into what I was saying, that they use the time from Atlanta, the time off to fix anything that they needed to fix, to try out something new. And you're here at SI. You need to be trying everything in your arsenal to be getting these wins even if it's getting you the round up, even if it's getting you the map, whatever it is, you have to be bringing everything and leaving everything on the playing field here. And I love that that is coming out of VP because as we've talked about, they don't have that strong of a map pool. They are very stagnant on what they have. Yep. So the Oregon is really no brainer to me. They've loved that map for as long as I can remember, even back when I was competing. So that should be a map that should favor them. That third map is really the toss up for me is to see because they can't play their play style. They can't play that stagnant play style. So I am really curious to see what that third map could possibly look like if we get there all right well that's all we've got time for it is time to get underway with our first map of this series we're going to liquid and of course to run you through all of the action it's a fluke and a fraud <laughs> <laughs> see i already knew this was coming because as soon as, as you were soon doing as this you i was said like it, i'm gonna be the fraud am i not as soon as the bit was going together it was like oh yeah yeah i'm gonna be the fraud hey what's up it's fluke and the fraud we're here with well, I guess the breakdown of this. Two teams that, okay, for sure, there is some history. For sure. There's some slightly wobbly performances yeah. recently, but I think this could turn into a good taste of possibility. I think that's a way of phrasing it. That's a way of looking at it, is there's a possibility of these two teams to have big performances. It starts here, though. We are back on club. Our second time here today. 
yeah, it's, uh, you know, we, we could be getting new maps or new work maps like uh, labs. Not in, you know. not in this showdown. No, not in this showdown. This isn't a labs kind of game. No. This isn't a labs kind of game. Clubhouse, though, it is the house of basics. And we're going to be... The house uh, of base? I mean, basically, both of them runner-ups at an aside at some point. Yeah. Maybe, you know, not under the current organization for VP, um, but you know, the experience is definitely there. We actually, obviously, you know, in the game that we did earlier today, GT versus NIP, we said this is the lobby with the most SI champions in it throughout the whole tournament. This is the lobby with the most SI runners-ups runner -ups in it throughout the whole tournament. And you, you wish for possibility on them because the success story and what could have been and what should have been and what hasn't been hasn't always been their fault. You look at, obviously, the easiest threat of that is Virtus Pro on the right-hand side of the screen. That roster, at least four of them, when you come second place in an SI and then get dropped within about a month and a half, I think it was, you know, and then you have to spend a whole year and a half rebuilding. That's yeah. a Trying tragedy. To get back to get That's through. a horrible to have to go through. Yeah, and of course, you know, if, if we look at the liquid side of thing, um, I mean, Nesk and Palu pop up. That was our first SI that we ever worked at that point. Memories. Uh, during, during the finals, Palu playing under some in, immense circumstances as well that day, and they just fell short against NIP back then, uh, who we had in our previous matchup. So, <laughs> Liquid is one of those teams. <laughs> is that Bionicle? Yeah, but it's been around with them ever since the first game on stage. It's always there. Nice. Love Bionicle. Yeah. Love me some lore. All right, we start here. A standard map, a standard setup, and two, I mean, they can be standard teams. This is one of those conversations that you will all at home probably hear quite a lot about this, of the two main play stars of Siege that are currently floating around. One of them is the famous bit theory, is the one where it's, you know, sort of balancing out the idea of how do you product a map, how do you find it, that's modern Siege. Old school classical Siege is what you'll know this rush yeah. roster for. Yeah, they are very tried and tested, I have to say. Like, they, they are just, they've ran the same setup, the same attack thousands of times, and they've perfected it almost, like, a hundred percent, which makes them very difficult to stop once they do finally get going. And that's always a danger with VP. Like some people are like, okay, well, we know what they're doing. Yeah, but they're doing really good. <gasps> Crime. Crime has occurred. Fenrir, who is actually often banned, was banned in our earlier series is here. If, you know, that, that sort of terrifying gadget, it can stop an approach unless Nesk is able to slip their way in there with those drones that do a little tee -hee and steal the utility, steal the gadgetry. They've doubled down, in fact, on the drone power. They might have banned Flores, but they're more than happy to bring the others. They've got the Twitch rolling through and just clearing this route here to Volps. He's slowed. Sort of a statement of intent there, popping that Goyo and saying, look, we know you're coming. You're not as sneaky as you want, but or maybe always might be the one that gets caught out. The pings come through. Volps, if he doesn't know about this player on the left, there's a stack up here and it's all sort of focused onto blue. There's a route through and an escape. The air jab doesn't quite get the full read through, but look at this full send now. Reinforcements coming through, extra air jabs as well. It's definitely keeping him at bay. Nest has found himself into the armory, but the second player that's inside of Church will find him instead. Forbes looking to find a response, will find so as well. Player still behind the half bar. He's not able to respond on the side of VP. Now there seems to be this pressure, this close down here onto the site. They read that there was this roam, this extension over towards the top. You can still see Dan is above. Reset's gonna try and get the plant itself. Always is pulled back. They need Dan to impact and attack. Joystick, he's about to hit a hatch that's being firmly watched by Lagonis, but he can't get the swing. A post-plant situation, it's on the far end of the AK, it's right on the back corner. And there's the smoke, stop a little bit of the motion. Volps is swinging either side, always is trying to sneak his way in. They've got to go for the pinch at the same time here with the shoulder cover of Dan. There's the swing, there's the first take, 25 seconds. They've got control along Corridor, and Palu's got control of one, but always is always there for another response. There's Joystick. And they may have lost control of the site with Liquid seeing an opportunity, but Virtus Pro were able to turn that into their own. Yeah, and I mean, of course, you know, it is an opportunity that uh, that they took. They managed to get that plan down, but the control they had upon themselves was not really too 
too well established. You're playing on the A case, you have slightly control of blue, but there's still the above, there's still going to be, a, you know, the main hallway, the, the blue side of things. A lot of area where VP can go for a repeat and retake. Managed to successfully do so this time around. I think it was a good sort of push and pressure there from Liquid that they saw that, okay, they've extended themselves towards the top. Okay, they're playing this. Okay, what's this? Hey, you remember when I talked about the beginning? Old school Siege and how it can be read and it can be changed against? That is the perfect example. You yeah. expect where they're going to be. You expect how the hold is going to go, and you have to give a bit of credit there because where VP have struggled before is their adaptation. Is there things are going wrong? How do we change that? How do we bite back? How do we get ourselves back into this fight? Well, there was a good read. They knew that they'd lost that position. If Always had gone into that fight, he probably would have died. If Joystick had gone into that fight a little bit earlier on the hatch, he probably would have died. They were waiting for the perfect moment to strike. That moment came after the kit had gone down, but it netted a win. And I mean, right, if the kit goes down and you manage to defuse it, there's no real problem. It's not like it will give you a disadvantage. A win's a win. Of rounds. It's just a win, right? Oh, so, Pasha. Yeah, <laughs> he's being loud. Shows you how much it means to these players. And I know we've made the joke before when we saw them play, and like they hit the most insane clutch ever, and they just have the most neutral face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To this is it. a changed team. This is a changed team. But, there is okay. so much emotion there. Very, very quick yeah, history lesson yeah. of SI and yeah. performances from teams from this region. Now, it was once upon a time four of those names on the right hand side of the screen and one different roster who had these huge okay. runs, who okay. were a terrifying okay. force in EU and obviously being able to make the distance there. Pasha was on a different roster that qualified for SI once before. Unfortunately, the yeah. team, which was Virtus Pro at the time, uh, could not go because of a COVID situation or an illness situation during the height of the pandemic. Yeah, was it the same as I that uh, NIP won? It was. It was, right? Yeah. It was. It was uh, the Paris, and they had to pull out. And this is, and Pasha is a player who's been in the scene, who has been sort of chomping at the bit. I think one of the other years he was second in the open qualifiers to get to SI. This being the first time he's been able to make it here. I so want him to pop off. As a player that we've watched toil yeah. and fight against everything and have the one chance at doing this before, unfortunately taken out of his hands, we're gonna see a lot of, we're gonna see a lot of passion from passion. I mean, this is the thing, right? Like SI is the dream of every player that plays Rainbow Six. A hundred percent. This is what you work towards. That is what you work towards if you play competitive. There's nothing else that you want to go. You want to go to Six Invitational. You want to play in front of that crowd. You want to lift that hammer. And of course, only five players a year can do so. So it is a very tough dream to achieve, but Bomb they are just a little bit closer by just being here. Now, how will they get the rebuff this time around? Liquid, as I said, had a great read before. They saw opportunity and they tried to smash their way through here. They're getting some of the busy work done. Maverick, his pick rate has sort of flown up, but this has always been quite a good map for him. They get the electrics and the breach on the break. Palu just dipped underneath the fight and the engagement across CC window. He's not entirely going to lead that in himself. I am wondering oh. if we're going to get a bit of a charge here from the players on Jacuzzi because they haven't really done a huge amount of work elsewhere. No, but if I open up the mirror window, so Joystick's position is slightly compromised right now. Whoa! It's going to be oh! using the warding glasses to not be flashed, gets a kill on the back of it, and that really reinforces his current position out there. I think that was a little bit of a luck and a little bit of unfortunate siege timing. That is more than luck. Joystick double dips. Nesk is the response with Palu getting the even hand on the back end. Okay, three apiece, 40 seconds. There's still a lot here that Liquid can play with and manipulate. They may have lost two of the bre uh, two of the sort of players they've lost their hard breach they've lost their soft but they have a lot of guns behind them they still have a little bit of wiggle room and as you said they've done the hard work now can palu on the back end cause some problems cause some chaos maybe get one more body he's in a one versus one here technically but he doesn't know nesk is able to get always but gets caught out by pasture and Virtus pro hold the line I, mean, I might have not expected a player to be that close in cash, considering the pressure was, till that point, only on the site so yep. far. So you might have expected he could go on, but no, caught off. Still had the person watching the flank out there, making sure that there was no way they'll be uh, struck from the backs. And VP 
with a bit more of a convincing second round. This time they were able to stop that plant from uh, from even going down in the first place. Look at that choice. Yes. Activating I mean, it. Swing and pre-fire. Yeah. The, I, you know, the, it's a huge kill from the practice of that, but that's just unfortunate place for resets to be at that time. Because we've seen him just repel up as well. It's siege timing. It happens. It, it does happen. And I mean, like his point was always going to be to swing as soon as he activated those glasses. He's like, yep. oh, yeah, flashbang yeah. just popped. They will feel confident they have the upper hand. I'm going to be changing that and Cause bringing it trouble. into our own hand and cause some trouble. So, you know, well done. Uh, good decision made there. And it paid off in the end. And, you know, while some people might be, oh, that's yeah, luck. But he has practiced that exact same yeah, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. so many times. Like, I'm going to get the railing from left to right, so whoever's repelled up there, they lose their head. You know what the, you know what the best Dagger people at anything say? In any sport, any competition, you make your own luck. Yeah, you make your own luck. You make your own luck. And that, that's an example, which all of these players have. We're not just saying the only player who has that in this tournament is in this game. No, every single player that's fought to this point knows those tricks, knows those swings and moments. They'll know that they got bit by it, but you know that Liquid is going to want to bite right back. And here it starts on CC, a site that we've always talked about is being a bit touch and go for the hole. They're putting some attention onto the back end. They're going for a bit of a logistic take. They're spreading themselves out rather than the direct push towards Jacuzzi as they did before. Palu on a solo mission on the Dockaby once again. To be fair, Palu says, I'm going to go over here and kill people. You sort of go, okay. Right. <laughs> You're gonna. Good yeah, luck. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. I believe you. <laughs> I believe in you. Uh, just make sure you manage to get one or two out. Just use one of those phone calls basically to, to drone himself into some extent, right? Like, okay, don't hear any of the logic bombs going off right now close to me. Means I'm clear. Means I can move on. Nesk in the meantime on that top floor, making sure that bedroom is under their control so they can start pushing towards construction. And that is because they want to go for a two-prong kind of approach. You saw them opening up onto uh, the big wall on the outside with the mirror window before, and I believe they popped the mirror window and stopped the x cars from blowing up but still that's an angle now that they will have to be wary of and the rest of the team is going to try and find themselves to construction however joystick i think that is all we need to say in that situation a minute 30 and liquid still hasn't been able to get this first engagement but they have some of these loose players you don't always see a maestro out and about enjoying himself but the air holder is a hell of a gun Unfortunately, not quite enough as the catch comes round. But Joystick, as you said, he isn't too far away. He's a shoulder and a shake and a shimmy round on the corner. They're still being cautious, but not cautious enough. Joystick takes one, has the option to hit strip. Instead, goes up to Billiards to find the next fight. But it's Volps, the pickup from this year to see if he can try and keep the momentum going. A minute on, four versus three. They have the man advantage, plenty of time. And as I said, the take is one across the side of construction and the wall starts its destruction. Now they do need to take care of the red staircase because right now you have the, red, uh, the mirror window on the top of the red stairs, which are just going to be a problem. The evil eye out there is going to be given away. Volks blend slightly. Gone six used to get rid of it. So no more information being fed in. But as long as that mirror window is still left up at the top of red, there is no real safe way for these players Players in construction to try and move through. Oh, that's cam. I mean, this is exactly the point I was going to make. You've got Maestro Bubble. Yeah. You've got one extra Maestro Bubble now since the change. They've got three and you've got the sort of Intel of the Valkyrie and the Mirror. They are full Intel at this. Alongside the Goo Mines that'll trigger, they are more than happy to play on the reactivity. And this is where Liquid have struggled to get in. But 10 seconds, they're knocking on the door and get right pushed back. Dan sprays through, cutting the crossfire. It's a one versus three out of nothing. And that was all built on that intel, on that thread of knowing where everything was coming from. They kept on putting up new obstacles, new walls, and Liquid just could not find that breakthrough onto the site. It wasn't just VP's intel though, Emmy. Because that dog would they hacked the camera, they hacked the phone. They were the ones actually looking on the Maestro camera on that side. They knew, okay, there's two people inside a CC. There's one person on the side of red. We can go for the push right now. And 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 Whilst they did that, whilst they opened up the mirror window, uh, weren't able to eventually get those shots off. VP uh, standing strong out there. I mean, I mean, Joystick didn't really have the full impact that they wanted to, right? Like, you were one, maybe two kills. But in the end, it didn't really matter that much. VP able to hold off. A little bit of a missynchronization possibly coming through. Well, three rounds in a row here for Virtus Pro, and obviously when you're sort of getting yourself set up into club as a map, into what is Liquid's map, 
here on this situation, you go, oh, how's this going to boil together? But left. it was a point that was raised on the desk is this was for a long time known as a Virtus Pro map. It was a great place for them to play. It was well constructed for their game. And also, oh yeah, it's Clubhouse. It is known as the default map. A lot of teams have a game here. And, you know, a lot of teams construct it in different ways. They haven't taken their time out. Liquid is sort of par for the course at this point. It's not that they've been a million miles away no, on some close. of these rounds. Different close, they just need one or two gunfights to swing the other way, and they're there. And it's like, do you really want to take the time for that right now? Because no. these players will probably know, with all the experience they have, what is going wrong and what they need to fix. So you probably will see those adaptations to come through very soon as uh, they are trying to get themselves established on that top floor, making sure there's no roamers out there before they actually hit the site. Because players like Dan are out here, are trying to cause trouble. You just need to pay attention to them. Well, will the drone game become something that slows them down a little? We're seeing an attempt now at a full catch, a full clear. They went for a quick nippy play on the first round and didn't quite have the rewards that Liquid yeah. were hoping for, even though it was close. A post-plant situation isn't anything to scoff at. Here, though, when you look at the past couple of rounds as well, they're much more sort of, okay, well, let's play the full game. Let's go for the full clear. Let's sort of get everything checked. And they're losing a lot of time. They might get the man advantage. But time is that sixth man. So here, getting the strike onto Volps with this sort of minute and a half situation left, with this drive that's continuing its way across. This is, I think, maybe one of the fastest they've been able to get that opening body. It, it has definitely been one of the faster ones. But the thing is, if you go for a full top to down clear as you come in, it, it is just going to be costing you a lot of time. And Reset's now picking up joysticks. That is actually going to be a very important one. Cameras are going to be hacked as well. So any other form of intel that might be there, not that there is any, you know, but sides the default cams, is going to be uh, known now for the sides of Liquid. A minute left on the clock. All they need to do now, open up these hatches, get themselves ready for the execute they want to go for. Or they go for triple wall, or they go for kitchen. But that's the only two options they really have. Sprayed through against Palu, and always is just going to pull himself back and give the structure towards the site itself. But I like that Liquid is sort of playing their own game and pace, because look at this. They have the two-body advantage. They're still getting control of the hatches itself. The wall of church is being opened up. Dan does get some control into dirt, but at the same time, the four versus three, Shepard has to do a little bit of magic here. I'm not sure where the Fenrir mines are still up, if there's one on the swing, but there's one definitely swung around onto there. Cannot get the second, Volps. He's able to keep securing bodies as Lagonis almost goes down. It's the third for Volps here, always in this clutch situation. He's dancing either side of the hard wall onto Blue. He's got a bit of pressure down onto Long, a bit of pressure down onto the swing onto Moto, and then the kit post-planted just tucked on where that breach was onto Church Wall. Finds the first. The second, as I said, is on that Moto door. There's a bit of a split approach. Oh. He downs the Gonus. It'll be very hard to get the confirmation. Oh, no, There's not. a big bit of confirmation. And now, as he suffers the bite against the last, he knows they're on this wall. Sprays just over the top. The rotation round to his right-hand side. The resets is trying to get himself propped up. 20 seconds. He has one flash in pocket to waste a bit. Does he know how close the fight is? Might have heard the swap, but look how resets keeps moving away. He knows exactly the game he needs to play here, and he has played it perfectly. Either side baits the time, and resets wins that round out after the huge work done by Volps. That is like almost bringing it back from that 1v3 position. And I think that the moment he picked out the super shorty and started reloading that, that's the moment when they lost it. And of course, the idea is there to go for the peak with the shotgun. If they were close, that would have been the kill confirmed and he could have gone. But it just took too much time and that allowed him to just rotate through perfectly red. I think there might have been a drone. I think there might have been a bit of intel because look at, as well. look at the motions resets was making at that point. You know, he had a secure place. He had to watch onto the site. They knew where he was, but at the same time, they still got to swing for the fight. Resets motion going past the opening of the breach. You at that point will only do that if you know that they are pushing towards Moto Door. That's the only time you would be like, this is the smarter move right now. Rather than holding the position, I can only assume there was a drone. But at the same time, he still played it perfectly. He kept his cool, he kept himself sort of in that cat and mouse game, even at the end, just popped round, didn't try and secure the kill on the hop on the breach, because he's like, ah, I don't need to, there's not enough time, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, because at that moment, when they, when they jump over, there's 10 seconds left. 
there's only two options. Either they hunt for the kill or they start defusing. If they start defusing, you can go in after three seconds. Either you get the kill, you get killed, but then there's no more time for them to actually start that defuse. So with that said, uh, Liquid playing that perfectly out there. But we do have to say, it's very close actually to just taking the head off with that one single oh, yeah. ping Reload. over the bar that was right next to his head. Almost. So almost got that. The VP, they lose their first round. Liquid managed to get themselves on the board after VP. Well, they've played three incredible rounds and, Reloading. you know, turned the tides multiple times. Attackers have located a bomb. Gonna see if they can try and get the breach done onto Jacuzzi Wall pretty quickly. They pulled this off last time, but for me, the problem was they didn't have anything else. Look at Vops, look at the players, look at the inside of the site. Well, they're more than happy to. Pasha goes down, Virtus Pro. The alarm bell should be absolutely screaming in the comms right now. It's suddenly just two players left. And I said they had a fast take in the first round. Well, at this point, you'd think they set up the site. They were there that quickly. It's a post plant. No, it's not. And that is fluid liquid and that's one of those good like realizations good calls to come through it's like okay there's too many offside we can overwhelm them if we're all on board with this if we all just rush as soon as that breach hops there's no way they can stop us they also had obviously volps pushing up main stairs yes. as well getting into that position whilst getting the breach open and taking the one player that was on site beautiful read by Liquid to know what to do there. Because as I said, I was about to sort of make the point of the problem was they didn't really put any weight elsewhere. Last time they had four players on Jacuzzi and then the Dockerby on the far side. I was gonna say, oh look, they've got that. And then they're like, oh, they, we'll just take the site. I was like, okay, cool. If we put a lot of weight on one side of thing, we can actually maybe go through in the end. And Palu on the catch there highway, able to, uh, to find a couple. It's just, I mean, VP, at the moment, they're already flooded all the way through from Jacuzzi. You're finding yourself in such a tough situation because the bedroom is a pretty defendable site as long as you hold control of the actual rooms. As soon as you lose gym, as soon as you lose the bathroom, as soon as you lose the top of the stairs, suddenly there's not a lot of positions left where you can play safely. So that is something they definitely need to keep in mind if they will be going to back to that site in the future. But for now, we are headed back towards the armory, VP, not looking to complete the rotation for a second time around and go CCTV because they knew they were quite close on this bottom floor they just needed to change one or two small things she has a huge huge bit of experience as well to sort of get to the 03 position on your map and go no 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 we, we we're confident we we can pull this back we can sort of get the drive down there's always that balance of whether it's the coach that sort of says i know what my team can do i know when these players need to have someone talk to them just based on how they're moving how they're playing or there's something obvious or no they'll work this out it's a confidence and it's an experience, Volps. He steps into the goo mine and gives a little bit of the intel of the approach away, but they're more than happy to sort of still bait that. It's a bit of utility. You just you just traded a little bit of health for the utility. It's fine. It's not just that, but also the prox alarm that just went off. So it's like all the alarm bells just went off. Like, ah, oh, there's someone here. Not again, not again, not again, not again. He instantly fell back. He's like, I'm not going to try and take this one. Look at this, though. Obviously, the last time we were here, we lost two bodies on the top floor in the set in the sort of middle area of the map. Here, Virtus Pro entirely pulled themselves down towards the site. All five players, flat as they can be, across with Joystick having the most adventure, slightly up his deck. Now they did put up a lot of barricades just to slow down the, the side of Liquid slightly and also of course gain a small bit of information like hey they right now have entered this room and they've entered the bar area, stuff like that. And as they get going the drones uh, having a lot of extra time right now to actually do work on the site. The track stingers being caught off by the magnets. Volps now looking around with that Bravo is going to be hacking one of the magnets just to make sure that utility can fly through in the future. Well, they're sort of waiting currently. The hatches, they're not quite being battened down, more blown up. The catch onto the utility that's otherwise across it and Pasha playing the Tuberau the first time we've been able to see the operator. If you're new to knowing what they do, well, they're a little bit chilly. They throw a canister that freezes things in their tracks and gives you some of the tracks on the approach, but with the proxies and the bullets that quickly follow, they don't really need the slowdown right now, more than sort of saying, come on, speed it up. 
40 seconds and the spray against the chair is reset, stacks all the way in. They've got control of blue and there's the freeze. So as soon as they try and swing this, suddenly they'll be a bit slowed. Lagonis, he's tucked on the close plant. Hera C4 would ruin his day, but with the attention being put in from the far end, it's Shepard on the swing, gets the plant at 20 seconds. Now he's holding himself behind the table. He's waiting to see if a new face tries to show up and get the kit. It's Parley when resets with one apiece, but they haven't got the man that stopped it before. They're double stacked. Second again, joystick. Gets another round for Virtus Pro and make sure that they keep their advantage into the second half. We well, don't even double stack, triple stack at some point, but one of them got taken out. It's like, and it's well, Shepard there in the first moment, they realized as they went through, but before that, let's just uh, quickly go for a mid half call in. We got a mid half call in with <laughs> Jesse on the line. Hello, Jesse J. Chick. Hello, Emmy. Hello, Hap. Listen, I've come in to uh, perhaps warn the people because although I did come into this series predicting Virtus Pro to come out on top, and although they had a great first half, 4 2 split, not bad at all, this is a map that we've seen VP struggle to attack a lot in the past. Throughout stage two, Clubhouse was Virtus Pro's most played map. Despite that fact, they struggled on attack. 41% overall win rate attacking this map through stage attack two. And Liquid, for their point of view, have never lost a defense through stage two on this map. Now, that's because they didn't play this map. So, big caveat on that. <laughs> However, that still does lead into things. They've clearly been hiding some stuff. VP may not know what to expect, which may make their attacks even more questionable. So, although I do think VP win this series, I'm, I'm a little bit worried that they only got four rounds in that first half. Well, thank you very much, Big Brain Canadian. And away he goes. I don't know where to. I don't know either. They Maybe. keep analysts and casters very separate. Yeah, just put them back in the jar. In, <laughs> the, <laughs> in the jar? He's small enough. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't need like an entire... Jesse looks like he could be tall, and then they started putting him next to Lax, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> the ram going through is going to be opening up quite a little bit of the kitchen. He came in and said really good, interesting points. And he was like, yeah, Jesse Small, lol. <laughs> well, I mean, he said, they've never lost a defense at stage two. Why did he sound play. like that to you? Is no, that what okay. sounds like no, to you? No, 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 it's not what it sounds like. Okay. Yeah, he does. It was a great impression. Thank you. That's what it sounds like to me. Sure, that. A minute-ish has gone-ish, but so is all the Liquid players. They have fallen their way back towards the site. We saw it as the final hold there of VP, where they sort of held everything close to their chest. You can play it. It's how it was traditionally played way back when, before we sort of had the extension, the roam, the play around the space, because there's a lot of space down here. There's a lot that needs to be taken control of. There's a lot of hatches. And the bait onto where to do it has slowed Virtus Pro down quite a lot. As I said, pace might have been an issue before, but VP are a slow and steady team. They are using the Rams to try and speed up some of the clear on it. They're going for the break here on towards the opposite end. Volps isn't quite going to get the impact of the angle on the first, but we'll go for the second and maybe the third set. Yeah, I mean, the second set soon to be deployed. And that is, of course, the, when you really want to make sure it's not going to be opening up. But another Bugi is starting to come through. It's a lot of sound that is uh, being emitted right there by the device, but also opening up all those angles, making it really unplayable for the players down below. But you don't know when you are going to be uh, swung at from those angles that are opened up. Extra thermic to be used on one of the hatches as well, just to make sure that the uh, well, variety of options is going to be there for Virtus Pro, but also the amount of pressure points that they could use Utilize when the final execute finally will hit. And if you look at how they set up, well, a lot of hatches have been opened up, so it seems like it might be a normal armory plant. I mean, they love to do the play that they're sort of building towards. They love to do that structured hold here, and that's the take and the setup that is a lot including the Mute Jammers behind that church wall. You've still got Lagonas pretty comfortable and confident with that wall solid onto dirt. So it, it's going to be a little bit of an awkward push in because, well, they don't have control of any of the swings. Pasha has to try and force some of this church wall to make it a bit safe to drop down onto the back end. 20 seconds left. Joystick finds the first. They've finally gone for the break onto the church wall here. They're going to swing into the fight in a second. The flashes come around the corner, but with time ticking, they swing into their own flash. Drop down onto blue. The double down swing from Reset gets the destruction inside Moto. Tucked around, can't find the fight. They're a little bit lost. His Liquid just step into the space, they claim. Dan's a little bit too late to the party because there might be four players, but there's that many seconds, and they just run out of time. 
And you just look at that, and it, it just, everything kind of falls apart. This moment that first flash hits, resets, allowed to go for a double peak, take down Bo, get into motorcycle as well, whilst the third player is starting to come through. And it's, it's just unfortunate there for the side of Virtus Pro how that round eventually played out because it seemed like they were starting to get into the right path and then it all just broke down. All right, good start here from Liquid, but what changes can come through from the side of Virtus Pro because time is a cruel mistress, but no crueler than on this side. When you've sort of baited them into the full clear, the others are much more direct routes through and they're able to win a couple of their engagements, but when only one engagement going away from you sets the sort of style you're down for and you don't have the time to reconstruct, I, I mean, it turns into that nightmare situation. And it fell at that point that the opening from the triple wall actually hurted them because they lose one to reset. Then you see the Habana turn around. It's like, oh, wait, there's an opening there. I need to be watching as well before someone pops out. Get shot in the back. And it's like they, you just lost the entire flank out there because you were both taken down due to a faulty flashbang. And again, it is unfortunate the way that that round played out in the end for Virtus Pro because it felt like they were building him quite nicely. It started like they were getting some good control. And then it crumbled. I need to reload. We talked a little bit about passion of the players earlier on, and I did for one of the teams, but let's be real. It goes without saying it's Liquid here. Liquid on their home soil. Liquid with a Nesk and a Parlu who have been fighting and biting for this chance for the Dawn of Siege. Being able to claim that sort of trophy position, being able to claim that lead in position from the side of things in front of a home crowd, you cannot imagine a team that is as fueled up. And yeah, you know, there's sort of a lot of strong teams, especially from the Brazil region. There's a lot of huge potential. I mean, there's the current two time major reigning champions that are in contention. But I think if you will see anyone that is fighting to the end of this possibility, you are looking at Team Liquid players. And people, even on socials, they keep saying, like, when? When are they finally going to win it? They keep getting so close every now and then. Fulps open it up. It's going to be a great start of this CCTV round for, uh, for Liquid. I mean, they are here at this major because of the run at one of that at one of the majors even. They're here at SI. Oops, Pasha. Slips happen. Workplace accidents happen. Oh. Oh. Well, it's definitely a way to finish it off. Yeah, <laughs> there's a great take from Volps, who has been tearing through some of these rounds. He seems to have these big triple kill, quad kill rounds and, and gets that pace going for the roster and the team here. A two versus five. And they've sort of fallen to bits on this approach onto what is supposed to be the most sort of standard and known attack. And it does seem to uh, be the... Fault, like the faulting kind of attack in the intercom, just everything going away. I mean, just look at the breach as well. It's just not completely Ooh. done right. Shepard will find Volps though, as he did decide to jump through the wall again or through the little gap to get back towards the site. So definitely an opportunity for VP to bring it back slightly. They need to work together though. They need to be that two men pushing up, making sure that they work towards that same goal. And as they are on the rafters, they might actually have the opportunity to locate one, maybe even isolate two of these players into straight up one-on-one -on -one fights. But they do need to win them if they want to have the opportunity. And the big danger is still in the player that's in construction, but Palo being below as well, having the opportunity to just deny that plant with the C4. And with 10 seconds left on the clock. Shepard taking damage, wanting to go for a plant. He doesn't know what to do next. And as now is covered down below falls, it is Liquid that equalized the score. Four apiece and they are a team with a fire. So as I was sort of highlighting towards the middle of that round, of all the teams here at SI, only five of them have been at just one of the two majors we've had this year. And two of them, have been from Brazil, and one of them is Liquid. Oops. Yeah, there's a frustration. That's, I mean, it's rough. It, it, it's the toughest stage. People are gonna make mistakes. People are gonna make slip ups. It happens. It, it's beyond frustrating for anybody. Their run at one of these two competitions, getting themselves second place to W7M was enough to get them here. When they make it, they can be ferocious.
apart from last SI, yeah. where they got off to a bit of a bad start. Got off to a bit uh, bad start indeed. And, uh, but this is also the thing about Virtus Pro, like, either they're just like playing like the stars align, or they're just just not getting over the finish line every single time. Like, they, they bring close matches. It's not like they get 7 out, 7 out, 7 out. No, it's always like the 7 5, 8, 7, 7 5 again. It's like just not able to get things across the finish line. And, and of course, that is frustrating for themselves as well, but that's why they need to get the strong start right now. They just need to try and get themselves with an early map one victory. Now, Claymore's being set up to uh, prevent any runouts from happening, of course. It is Virtus Pro trying to get themselves ready as they start opening up on the uh, cash and CCTV side of things. Holding on with the C4, ready for the approach. On towards the break of the mirror window. You sort of play this position so you're ready to clip the edge of it, get the pop onto the wall and put the pressure down, the spray down on towards oh. it. What are you owing? C4 double kill. Oh, just a single one to come just through. Just single. But yeah, I mean, that, that was what they were eyeing up. They open it up, and as Dan will find a response into Nask, it's still that you've lost your Maverick, however. Now, Pasha, if they really want to be going down in from this side, would have to use some of his Xcars to open up. And you now there is still two players out there, so it's that decided to go for a bit of a different route. Joystick entering from the garage will be followed up by Pasha as well. They'll be taking it from a, you know, alternate angle at this point. Okay, well, the time is still steadily ticking. We're always going to have these late sort of moments between these two teams on this map, which does make me really curious about what a board is going to be like, because you sort of are forced yes. into engagements quick. And the sort of comparison I would make with some of these players was, Virtus Pro, I could be wrong about this, and I'm sure the other EU heads might be shaking their heads. Were they a good coastline team? I think they were. As a comparison to an aggressive thin map. I mean, they were a part of the... We're talking about like the old empire, right? Because we're they, talking about the players that are in. Yeah, the they, they were a part of the longest ever match that took they place. Were. It was like 12-10 or something like that. And in the year afterwards, they actually took revenge on G2 by, I believe it was a 7-1 or 7-2 victory. So I, I would say they're pretty decent at coastline. Okay, I'm glad my vague recollections of four years ago of Steve's <laughs> when two of the people sat in our talent room way beyond it were players. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But, Part of that game. <laughs> so I would love to see them on a border because I want to see if they still have that sort of pace. They still have because I personally think that those two maps can handle it a similar way. You can go for these quick takes. Talking of Lagonis, he's going to swing for two. He gets one though, which to be honest, with three guns swinging at you, it's still a good take. Pasha moves in behind the slightly deconstructed wall there. There's always getting his second for the round. The last two players, one tucked right onto the corridor, watching for Dan's hop in. And there's Paul, Palu getting always on the back end. Dan, he slinks and slivers his way across. Pasha doesn't want to go for the plant, but he goes for the player instead. Volx is all that's left, as I said. He's had a huge impact on some of these rounds. The down onto one, a one versus one, and only six oh, seconds baby. left, and it's Volx! With the bailiff as well, swaps over to the pocket shotgun. There's only six shells in there, able to find both connections. And that is definitely a bit of a tilter for Virtus Pro out there because they had the control, they could go for the plant, and at that moment, it's just that little, little, little shotgun that comes through, which is only used for landscaping usually, this time used to close around. Timeout as well to be called by Virtus Pro. I said it just before in the previous round, he has been that impact factor. Yes, he's well, at the time, wasn't sort of the most bodies to his name, but over the past couple of rounds, that one especially, if he can get a win in the column, that is all that matters. And what a bite back in this has been for the side here of Liquid. Five to four, three rounds tied in a row, and I said it halfway through the first half. Oh, Liquid, they're 0-3 down. They're not taking their time out. They got the trust that things can go right. Virtus Pro, oh, They've just gone 0-3 down. They think they need to change something. Yeah, and especially, I mean, the sort of two rounds, they're like, okay, that one, they had quite some control. They, again, went quite well. That bailiff is just, you saw it in the faces as soon as it happened. It's like the hands go up and it's like, what are we supposed to do against that? It's, it's, 10 seconds to go. Because Forbes was just in the right position at the right time. Three shells left. Dumped them all uh, into the body of Pasha out there. It's, look at that. I bet you, 
there is going to be so many good like b real shots of players popping off at this event. There is definitely going to be a lot of uh, pop-off shots that we're going to see. I don't know if it's something that is like said, so I'm not going to be the one that accidentally says it in broadcast, uh -huh. about how many people are going to be in the audience. It's a lot. So yeah, I don't know if it's like <laughs> we're releasing the numbers or we're building to a social media. I don't know if that leaks it, but I am so, so excited. I'm excited as well. These teams, I don't even I don't even know if they're ready. Even if it's their home region, I don't think they know how huge things are gonna get. It's and been, I I wanna see it. It's been a long time since we've had the Portuguese chant overshadow everything else. There's always like the hardcore Brazilians yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere. You can paint this picture from every event we've gone to all around the world. There is a Brazilian contingency that will travel with it, whether it's players, whether it's sort of teams, whether it's fans, it doesn't matter where you are, whether it is 12 people, whether it's 50 people, whether it's 120 people, or even two, or even two. They're always the loudest in the room. They will be the voices of the room. There was Berlin, where there was a balcony of Brazil versus an arena of EU chanting back and forth against each other in the finals and it was even if not I was a little bit more hyped for the Brazilians. <laughs> that was such a like a cool feeling. It was well, amazing. Sitting in the middle of that. The drive on through towards the site here, Virtus Pro. They're trying to make up for some of the lost times. They said it before, they sort of didn't leave themselves a huge amount of wiggle room when things went wrong in the previous round. The Ram does speed up the process here. They have all the eyes down towards a B drop, but it's not just those eyes that matter because if you don't have control of the swing around the back of the dining table from church, well then as soon as you hit that hatch, you'll probably get hit by one of the two C4s that's in pocket, as well as if you don't have anything onto dirt. You have to choose one or the other, whether it comes from pressure from dirt or blue, you need to make sure those angles get forced. They're going for the church take. They're going for the break. Open onto this wall and the bandit. Oh, tragic timing. It is tragic timing. Reese takes a little bit of damage from the MK14 above. However, you've just lost a bunch of those Xkyros. Not sure how many Pasha still has left in pocket if this changes the plan at all, because you see Shepard, he's ready up above on the kitchen hatch, has the, uh, the crossbow ready to send some incendiary bolts, but also the smoke bolts to aid himself in the push. But Palu might be coming quite clutch here as he does activate his glasses so he can look through the smoke. There he is. He's up on top of the top box and he sees the player drop right back down. Nesk is able to get one of his own. And as I said, if they've got free reign to freely reign over the that's drop. Well, there's not much else you can do. The C4 came over, but not before Palu had it, and not before Liquid. They don't care about the timeout. All they care about is getting themselves to map point. And I feel like in this round, Liquid allowed a lot more of the setup from Virtus Pro to happen without really challenging it. The hatch opened up. The floors open up. What's well, no real fight going back through? Because they knew they're going to try and go for an execute. As long as we keep this triple wall shut, they're going to have to go for plan B. And their plan B would be to go for the hatch drop on the kitchen, which was watched by Parler with those glasses on. So they kind of they kind of forced Virtus Pro into that way. It's like, yeah, you can open up the entire kitchen and everything that has to do with it. Just not this triple wall. It's like, this is free real estate. This you cannot have. <laughs> this? Yes. This? No. Yes, exactly. And, and they fell for it. It went for the exact same thing that they were allowed to do by Liquid. Wow, one round separates Liquid from being able to push this game from what was 4-2 down to now four rounds tied in a row and setting themselves up for the success before we head over to potentially Oregon. There it was, Ness got, got the catch to set. You have to make sure you get control somewhere else and Ernest Bro just could not force that first engagement, could not force that first fight. All of those power positions I talked about, inside blue, inside dirt, inside church wall, Liquid just held onto them, and yeah. there didn't seem to be the second setup to take care of it. Tuberau, he's back in the top corner. Palu is going to be bringing the operator. Now, if I sort of lightly talked about Zoto Canisters and what they can do, but also heck of a kit. A DMR on your defense sets you up for some success alongside the C4, and you've got what is a very explosive and throughout this tournament probably oh, frequently banned player. The gunner just moves back out, but it was a claimer just being set up as he moves through. But back towards that kit, it is the 0.50 M4 that Maverick otherwise has, but 
the M4 uh, carbine is just a little bit better, high fire rate works, a little bit. works better in the in the way that's being used. Whereas in defense, you want to hold off these tight angles. So those, you know, in those cases, the DMR often is better indeed. But the amount to just slow down everything is insane. Well, that's it. They have the possibility of freezing the canisters onto the wall. So as you deploy them, it will instantly freeze all of the gadgets that it's up against for longer than you feel like it should be. Pockets fulls and double second sets of seconds. And you've just got to sort of wait and sit. Maverick can burn his way through. Sure, all the defenders can at any point shoot the canister. The freeze will disappear. Whatever was in motion before, like breaching charges, will finish their rotation. They will not be destroyed. Merely paused as everybody takes a breath. Though, you partner it with a bandit, you partner it with the Kaid, some sort of electricity that can be deployed. Well, that will kick in first. Oh. Nesk taking a beautiful shot down onto Dan as he spotted out the player that was on the balcony. As he uh, shuts him down, it is now going to be a bit of uh, pressure arriving from Virtus Pro onto the garage. And as they're starting to uh, to try and open up even more, you can really see what the, um, what the what the plan is here from the side of Virtus Pro. They want to get that garage under control. They need to get the garage under control, and afterwards uh, they can try and get themselves into the actual breach. As Nest stands up, finds another, knows about the player that went through, but gets help from above. Takes down always as well, and it's just falling apart. It's only up to Joystick now. Well, Joystick, he has the world of pressure on his shoulders and the world to do in front of him. He doesn't do any of it. Resets is the one to reset this game. They pulled it back. I'm not going to say from the death, but they definitely were missing an energy in the opening few rounds and they screamed back into towards the rest of the half. Virtus Pro, even with the timeout, could not bring any of that back into their favor. And yeah, it's club, but you're heading to, if anyone had a sister site, Oregon as the follow-up. Yeah, it's going to be one of those other kind of default kind of game styles that come through. And where Liquid weren't really in the game those first three rounds, they definitely were as the second half went through. And that's a scary foresight for Virtus Pro. And that's all that they can sort of look forward to at this point, because even if you get through this, you're then at Porter. You're then at this aggression. You're then at this horrible sort of place that's going to be very thin, very fast, and very sort of aggressive. And talking about those things, I think we'll throw it to our desk. Who are some of those adjectives after this quick break?
Well, a 4-2 first half of VP. It falls by the wayside. Liquid, they run away with it. Yeah, I mean, Jesse, the first map didn't look so fraudulent to me, so. Okay, okay, listen, BO3, you wanna win your map picking the decider. Liquid have done the first step of that, but it's still plenty more Siege to be played. Of course you got something to say back to that. Anywho, <laughs> talking about VP specifically, that map, I mean, the good thing that was for Liquid specifically is they ran away with nine of those opening kills out of those 11 rounds. I mean, that's massive for Liquid. VP, like granted, they did win those first three rounds with the man disadvantage. So, I mean, they were clearly still playing, working together. We're seeing big plays from Pasha, uh, big plays from Dan as well. But you need to be getting those first engagements going in your favor because that way, especially on defensive half, you aren't trying to flex people and try to switch into positions because the second you start losing someone, you're losing control somewhere else. And Liquid started to ramp up as the rounds were continuing on. And then we were just watching Liquid run away, run away with those rounds. Now, looking at like the bigger picture of, you know, the scoreboard, it doesn't look too stark contrast, right? It doesn't look like it's been a blowout for no, Liquid. not by any means. Yeah. You said halfway through the show, Jesse, you said that, you know, you were a little bit worried. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, sometimes you say things as an analyst, sometimes you say things as a commentator, it comes to fruition and you go, oh, I'm pretty good. But it was nearly exactly how you had uh, prefaced it. Yeah, I mean, stats don't lie, right? I mean, we're coming here onto Clubhouse. This is a map that uh, we've seen Team Virtus Pro play a ton throughout recent times, throughout Stage 2, and they've always had problems on their attacking half. Now, especially in a meta where attacking is even harder than it was in Stage 2, my worries were that we might see those old tendencies come back in. And of course, they didn't win a single attack for that second half of the game. So I, I think for VP, you know, this is a map they're very comfortable on. It's a map they love their defenses on, but they've got to figure out what's been going wrong on these attacks. It has been consistent for many, many months now. Maybe it's just not a map that they can continue to rely on as heavily, or maybe it's a map where they need to come back and maybe rework those attacks. I don't know, but they got to get it figured out. Now, I'm going to ask you because, you know, you made the comment halfway through and then it, it obviously followed through. Mm -hmm. Did you see anything in particular on their attacks that, that were concerning that raised those red flags? I mean, we started with some questionable uh, things going on, right? Round number seven, they're attacking Church. Shepard blinds himself with a flashbang, loses a fight. We saw somebody fall off a roof. Like, there were some goofy things going on for the first couple of attacks um, where they struggled to even open maybe the CC wall with the uh, C4s that were coming through and the mirror windows that were coming through. Um, but I think later in the round two, it, when we started to see those final couple rounds on Church and on CCTV, we started to see some Capital play coming through that just wasn't getting very much value. The basement attack with Capital, they try to smoke the plants. There's a Warden sitting in sight, completely shuts it down. Then the Rafters, the very last round, they try to use those Firebolts to force Nesk out of Rafters. What happens? They get caught in Magnus, he gets a 3k. So I really do think there's some specifics when it comes to the CC wall and when it comes to specific ops like Capital, where they were struggling. Um, and it's just a shame that they weren't even able to find maybe one squeak out round to make that happen. And what's tough about those rounds, and from like a player perspective, it's those initial gunfights. Like one gunfight could have heavily swung that favor back into VP's hands, but because they were just losing the man advantage and then losing another person, it then just sets you up for that success for the other team of forcing you out of positions that naturally you should be holding that are a lot stronger. But because you're losing these people, you just don't have the numbers to keep working with everyone in a unison that you'd have had had you had those extra people up. Now we are moving across to Oregon next. So yeah. do we, are we concerned? because you know th so the two maps you know I don't want to say so like both with Clubhouse and Oregon I've even said this during the regular stage I've said this during Atlanta these are two maps that are very default there's nothing that you're gonna do that should really surprise somebody mm -hmm. there's nothing that you're gonna pull out of your hat and be like whoa we've never seen that it's more so just like staying what you know what works for you and figuring out maybe the small minute details that you can change within that strat whether that's bringing a shield somewhere else whether that's putting you know what what are certain traps whatever that is just in a different location from what they were prior that's what's really going to set the tone and make the difference for me on a map like such as Oregon. It's just a small change, not a gigantic change. I said at the start, I really wanted to see what VP looked like on border, and I ain't worried because I'm pretty sure we're going there. Oregon is a super strong map coming through from Virtus Pro. They're undefeated in tier one this season through four contests, beating Heroic, G2, BDS, and Wolves, all domestic, of course. And for Team Liquid, while it was a strong map for them back in stage one, they played it for their opening game in stage two against E1 Sports, and they only got two rounds.
I think ultimately Jesse just doesn't want to be a fraud. I think that's the biggest <laughs> thing here and why he's like really holding out here is because I'm not if Liquid wins, as I do see possible, you just don't want to be a fraud and you don't want me to call you a fraud, but it's going to happen. It will. It will. We'll, we I will worry. both Listen. sit here and we will both call you a fraud. Absolutely. We'll get to map three. We'll have this conversation. Okay? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of praying for it. Uh, look, I, I think at the end of the day for me, when we move to Oregon now, you know, much of the conversation we're having there, uh, is there concerns that it will echo? Like, are, are we genuinely concerned that the the struggles that we see from VP, mm -hmm. are they going to echo? I know, I know that this is a good map for them. Yeah. Does that at all worry you, concern you? This is, obviously, they've lost many rounds in a row. They're on a losing streak in terms of rounds. But this is also a roster that has been in the most yes. stressful positions a Rainbow Six player can possibly find themselves. I don't think, even though it's first day of event and sometimes things get out of whack, I don't think VP fold over and die on, on Oregon. I don't think that's reasonable. I think if we do see that, that'll be a huge shock and we will really be starting to question, okay, VP, bring it back together. This is their home. They're going to be comfy. They've been in much more stressful positions than this. I think they'll be okay. And even in in terms of play styles, I mean, Oregon is a map that this would heavily favor their play styles. In terms of that slow, dynamic, methodical play and forcing a team into the wrong position, I definitely think that does favor VP going into this, where they don't necessarily have to be going straight gunfight for gunfight. They can hold angles, they can force angles, they can do what they need to do to set them up for set themselves up for success. Yep. But ultimately, I think what they're going to need to do is they're going to have to shut down Volps. Volps was an absolute menace that last game, and if he keeps that up, and that's the beauty about everyone on Liquid in general. They all can pop up at any given time. When you look at Palu, you look at Ness, those are the two players you hear. But then you got Bolts just absolutely demolishing VP that last map. Now, coming back to you on this one, for the, you know, we were talking about opening kills being a little bit of a concern. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're now moving on to Oregon. I believe it's VP starting an attack. Yes. Do you consider this to be an alarm bell? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily. I think... I think, again, Jesse said it best, you know, this is a team that has tons of experience. They have sure. tons of things that they need to do in order to get things back and going instead of just giving up. So I think it's just a matter of recognizing where those mistakes happen, and that's the beauty of a best of three, is you can learn from that first map and implement that going into the second. Yeah, <sighs> We love the SI format, don't we? Yes. That's it, best of threes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we're only a third of the way through the day, but it is time to get underway with Oregon. We're going to go across to the incredible commentators and Emmy and Hap. Aww. No longer a fraud. No longer a fraud. <laughs> you graduated from being a fraud. I'm graduated to hat. Now, come on. Oh, you can see me. Yeah, I can see you. I can hear you in my That's as well. We're supposed to be duo. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not a fraud. <laughs> I'm the fraud <laughs> at Siege. We are going into Oregon. Will we find out about true fraudsters? Well, it's down to you, Virtus Pro. Still a pretty even prediction here, even after what has happened in the previous map, even this being Virtus Pro's map. There seems to be, uh, you know, a feeling of par for the course between these two teams. Well, no, fun stat. What? Fun stat? Yeah, all right. Treat Both me. these teams over the last year have had a 50% win rate on attack uh -huh. and a roughly 70% win rate on defense. Now, that can both be true here. Not both teams can have seven. No, seven that numbers. doesn't equal 100%. No, that doesn't equal if 100%. I put, if I put the two numbers together... That's 220 or something, 240. It, but it's just too high. But that might mean that whoever has the best attacking half could take this map home. Wow. Liquid, again, removing the Flores. Don't want to go up against what is a pretty powerful operator in the right hands, and they think Virtus Pro are definitely the right hands for the use of the drones, and the same response is the Candalus. We saw a couple of quick executes that came out from Liquid on the previous maps. There are some very quick executes you can do with Ying here. You're looking at maybe the push onto Blue and Barrels. If you're holding on the defense, you're looking at the push and the pressure on towards Double Window if they're holding up in dorms. Yep. By Azami as well, one of those like sort of five powerful defenders, the Architect, gone. Fenrir two, so a couple of changes in the bands. And I, you know, there's about five defenders at the minute and you sort of go, I wish I could ban all of them. You can't remove them all, so you have to make a decision. <laughs> yeah. It's choosing whether you want to die from being poisoned, being being shot, being pushed. I mean, most of them shoot you. Yeah. But it's like Valkyrie as well. It's one of those like powerful operators. Just Solace in the right hands. Solace in the right hands. Fenners. What? Fenrir. Oh, I was going to say Fenners. <laughs> Which operator is that? <laughs> But yeah, no, Fenrir also uh, he's moved. He's, he's Ollie's crutch. <laughs> what? Exile Troika. 
Oh, is that how he says it? No, I mean, it's... I'm sorry. Uh, this is me doing UK bits. Throwing and UK words. Your fellow UK members on the bus. Just throwing UK words out there and, re and remembering that you're Dutch. Yeah. And don't understand humor, mate. <laughs> Only driving cars really fast. Yeah, I know. I know. Dutch yeah. people are very good at that. Not all Dutch people. I mean, we had Nick de Vries. Okay. For like a couple races. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh. Things are evened out. Liquid could send this down in a 2-0 with Virtus Pro trying their best to hold this off and push us on towards border. Now, they start on attack where things did not quite work out. And it's not that they were a million miles away, but by the end of the game, it definitely felt like they were getting yeah. there. They were on a downward trajectory. There's no sort of two ways about that throughout the second half of club. I mean, the first three rounds, they managed to all win. And after that, one more round in the eight that were played after. So it, it, it was definitely a bit of a unfortunate series of events how that played out for Furtis Pro. But they have a way to come back now, to, to basically push themselves to border, bring the aggression to the table. As we're now, of course, playing on Oregon, still one of those basic maps. There is still some step-by-step -step plans, quite linear as well in how it plays out. But it does mean that whoever does those basics best is going to be landing themselves with this map victory. It has got itself a position where it can be a little bit shorter, a little bit sharper on the approach. They're still feeding and filtering the information that's coming from, well, mainly the Valkyrie and the pockets of Nesk, who on Oregon is just always one of those one of those operator and player combos where you're like, oh, this is triggering a lot of flashbacks to huge moments. The hatches are being opened up, not really being contested whatsoever due to the fact, of course, no cake being brought currently. So that means that those hatches will open up. But fortunately, that doesn't mean defeat in this map because those drops are very difficult to fight around, especially if you look at the e-box drop. The wall has been opened up to the side. Nesk has the opportunity to just swing around a Shiko door and try and put some pressure elsewhere just to make sure that that drop is not safe. So as a result, Virtus Pro now need to take barrels because you cannot really have a player that's inside of blue who play the way they currently do as Paolo finds the first kill onto Joystick. Just swung round onto the bottom of tower stairs as well. And as the wall gets popped open with pillar control still in their favor, having to get a second player into that position. Yeah. You've done the work Attackers elsewhere, but you don't quite have the support to go for the full confidence. Send it. Here is that confidence in the pockets of potentially Pasha, who wants to bounce some of these blinds towards that pillar player here. But the fire is keeping Shepard at bay. It slows down and, importantly, wastes the utility that we've seen pop before. The E1D, the first one, was let's send it. And then suddenly, Liquid put the walls up. The first was made of fire, the second's made of wall, and a little bit of a smoke canister. They swung their way in, but that difference of 15 seconds here has caused problems like this. Lagonis gets one with the E1D, uh, not the E1D, the Cat Cat Trap, even the EDD. <laughs> They've been able to fight their way through onto this power position, but you're still looking at just a swing round. There it is, the first, the second, a flawless from Liquid. A flawless from Liquid and one to check off of the bingo card, actually, with that Capkin kill to come through. Ah, oh, fresh is bingo. <laughs> Tick it off. Oh, that was a brutal round for the side of, of Furtis Pro out there. They had the right idea when they wanted to push blue. They, they went in. Yeah. They had the uh, E on D to go off. They had the Finca boost to stop them from being flashed by themselves because, I mean, it's, it's one of those more intricate kind of, uh, you know, effects of the Adrenaline Surge, flashbangs wear off much faster, which means that if you get flashed by your teammate, it doesn't really matter right. that much. So you have the opportunity to just walk in front of a flash because it will be fine. But as Palu starts uh. it off like that, I mean, that's just an average Palu shot, right? It's like, there's <laughs> nothing too much about it. I just completely ripped Whoa. apart. They're trying to go for a plan, but that was never going to last. I mean, th that's one of those rounds that's textbook siege for me. Yeah. You look at how that is played, and it's broken out in a step-by-step, -step, perfectly measured basis. Now, the take was Virtus Pro pushing from blue. As you said, they're a bit short. They're a bit sharp. They have the E1D going in. They're just sort of taking it step-by-step, room-by-room. Yeah. They're looking at what is in their immediate front with the power of hoping they can get it with a bit of a strike. What was the response that we got through from Liquid? Well, they had the E1D. So let's just pop this Goyo canister. And then as the Goyo canister was about to run up, there was a smoke canister that followed it round as well. So suddenly, Virtus Pro, I mean, yeah. you do a 3-2-1 count, 
before you pop that E1D. They're a team that will do that. Not every team will, but we know that they are a set up and take team. Yeah. Liquid know that just as well. That one bit of disruption disrupted about 25 seconds. So when it came through to the next push, suddenly the E1, uh, the ED, that's twice now. It's 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 annoying because it's E one D and E D D. Like the Dang it, denial Ubisoft. of device and I mean the entry denial device was first. Darn it. I'm just I'm just saying. Either way. E D D was uh, and and those mistakes <laughs> happen and liquid they pull back, they built the wall back up, they reinforced blue. Yeah. The surprise strike was perfectly red. I think you know you only waste a couple of seconds by um, you know, reinforcing that wall because the player sees it, has to go back, go for a different approach. But that's the more important part. Have to go for a different approach. The plan suddenly has been disrupted. The information they were acting upon and that they actually went for is no longer accurate. So you've just went for an execute with that incomplete information and you find yourselves not having all the cover you needed to go for that plans. They just start losing. They have personalized towels. But he's using Lagernus's. He's using Lagernus's towel. Nest, come on. Nest is using Lagernus's uh, towel. Maybe Nest just uses everybody's towels and Lagernus was is he sick having, of it. Is he giving it back now? It's like Lagernus passing back along. Lagernus was like, man, stop using my towels. It's got my name on it. And I've Nest, told you to stop Nest using like, towels. You should stop buying the best towels. Stop buying the softest towels. It's like, I really like your towels. I really like your towels. <laughs> it's like, buy your own towels. It's like, no, well, I mean, I could. Maybe it was a gift from someone. It might have been a gift from Lagonis. Do you think? Oh, two of that. <laughs> imagine like imagine gifting <laughs> someone a towel with your own name on. Whenever you lift a next trophy. Whenever, you, <laughs> whenever you look at that, you'll remember that I got you that. Um, so we are just on a quick tech uh, pause. If you haven't noticed, you can see the players. They cannot talk to their coach. They cannot talk at all apart from to uh, themselves, I guess, if they're feeling yeah, a, the a referee, little bit of fun. Or the referee. Because we have seen players like sing and things during this. And Oh, I mean, is that a word round? Is singing counting as talking? What? Is singing counting as talking? If you cannot talk. I'm not a ref. Okay, if you cannot talk to, to your team, yeah. can you sing to your team? I don't think so. <laughs> but I, I, don't I, know if I wish talk I would communicate. I wish you could. This I think that I would love legal. to hear. I'm actually gonna. It would be that. like Eurovision, <laughs> which is a singing competition. If you don't know of its existence, I do know actually. Uh, yeah, well, you're from Europe. Oh, really? This was that was mainly a segue to explain a Eurocentric thing to the rest of the world. But I'm glad that you know what it is as well. Europe-based hap. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm quickly trying to find if it says communicate or talk in the rule book. Are you actually are reading the rule book? I'm going to read the rule book right now. You know, there's some players that have never done this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do uh, League Ops as well for Ben Lux. So I'm, very, I'm very used to reading rule books. And I used to protest everybody and go for So I. Okay, really well, now all that sympathy is gone. <laughs> Unless you, like. Well, I, 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 okay. Fair enough. I stated with the protest, I don't want the free win. I just want them to upload their moss next time. That's literally, I wasn't doing it for the free win. Oh, you did it because of missing moss? I was, no, not just that, but also okay. like other stuff, like right. bad words being said. It's like, <laughs> tell them to stop doing that. Stop it. It's like, I don't need that's the win. I just, I just want. I like the idea of you being like, oh, oh, that's going in, that's going in the report. You are being reported. Where's your moss files? I played, um, the last thing that I played that required Moss uh -huh. Files was with other members of Talent. Tactical Talent. Including Dez, including F Fresh, including Easy, the Observer. We lost. Um, and, I, and I said, should we upload the Moss Files? And the ref said, no, don't worry. Um, you didn't play well enough. <laughs> so that's kind of... Kind of a shame as well. There's something <laughs> about tactical timeouts, but I don't see anything about technical timeouts. All right, we're singing. I, uh, League Ops, if you're listening. League Ops, <laughs> sing please, to us. Please tell me. Um, I am definitely going to be spreading this. You can <laughs> sing during technical timeouts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's something that might set a pace. Uh, so said, if you're just joining us, we're just on a, a tech pause. The first round was won by Liquid. It was won very well on the defense. They perfectly read the approach and, and perfectly read how to lock it off. 
So they kind of want to get back into this, but we are only one round in, as you can see in the bottom left of the screen. First round, it was a, a defense hold onto the basement floor, onto the laundry room. I think it's actually the map score, but... Oh, is that also the map score? Oh, it works for both it's ways. It's also the round it's score. It's also yeah. the map score. They won the first map. Team Liquid won their map pick, which was Clubhouse. We are now in Oregon. And if VP can win this, we will be heading to Bordea. 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 So, Sorry, the game was made by French speakers. So yeah, have so we to, have to pronounce it like that. It's just, it's oh, just a lot. So, Le border. <laughs> I know, like, some Ubisoft people are right now, like, either cheering or... I'm going to get fired. <laughs> I'm going to get fired. <laughs> I'm going to get, like, you know when they, like... You said worse things in French. So. People off, yeah, my bad. <laughs> Accidentally. So, you can see the players are getting themselves propped up and ready. So, assuming we'll be back in in just a moment. There it is. Perfectly done by production. Thank you very much. We find ourselves here on the top floor. Now, Tuberau is back. Do you want to talk about Tuberau? I did I did it twice last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can talk. Uh, Tuberau. Um, I had a nickname, which I'm not longer going to use. Tubby. Yeah, Tubby. Apparently, <laughs> not very nice to say that. It's just call, it's calling somebody <laughs> a chubby, like fat. It's... Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought that had a word already. So, okay. Okay. Tuberau. Either way, has Zotto canisters. And those canisters, they have the ability to not yeah, quite stop flag. time. But to slow everything down quite cool a bit, down. right? They cool Five it down a little bit. Any anything that is caught in that radius will temporarily stop. Except Attackers if you're a person, you can still move, but you will ball. be slowed, and your footsteps will show up. But it kind of stops any like heart breach, for example, to go through, or, or or drones being able to be used, and that gives an extra opportunity for, uh, for example, your bandit to come back over, place down a bandit battery. So as soon as the auto canister expires, Reloading. hey, the electrification is back on and that heartbreak is now gone. Still in the process of finding okay, itself balanced. They lost the canister. There was also a, a bit of a buff towards utility going against it, and the activation time was nerfed because otherwise it turned into a little bit of an instant game and a juggle. You should see Tim and Pengu, uh, Ace of Pyrite and Pengu, playing the combo with the bandit, meta-defining. <laughs> really, Ace is able to teach Pengu a trick or two. But he's finding himself not hugely picked as of this point. Parley's more than happy to run and roll with the gun. Pasha, he's got himself in towards the bedroom. He's sort of drifting back and forth and hoping for a fight to come his way. He's expecting to be swung. And to be fair, with how it could have been playing, it's not the most out there possibility. No, definitely not. Thorpe's though on the cam is going to be giving away a lot of information towards his team. Who's that? Parley's trying to line up. Yeah, yeah look at this lineup. You don't see many of them inside a siege, but some of them are really well thought out and need to be pixel, uh, pixel perfect to, uh, to get up that right spot. He's doing it again because he quickly had to go for a move. And again, uh, has to go for a bit of a challenge. So, you know, he, he is busy. He has multiple different jobs. It's not just this C4 as Volbs does go down. I was going to talk about Volbs for a second there because we could see them as the sole player underneath and drop through a drone. All is just, well, an unfortunate way to go. That's a lineup that's built into the map for you. It happens. We've seen, obviously, in the previous map, I said mistakes happen when a player fell off the roof. So is being caught out by a drone hole Bomb once or twice, even with all the reinforcements. It buys them a first body, though. And with how haphazard that wall has fallen, and Parley more than ready to try and make a little bit of a chill with the Zoto canister, there has to be this push up towards the top of white. They're concerned about a rotation that might still come from underneath. They don't feel entirely secure in that they don't know that there's not another player that's currently out and about. The four remaining players of Liquid are all inside Here the site. Uh, C4 gets tossed a little bit too late, Dan. He was out there, he was oh. spotted. Nesta will lean into the fight, will find a single kill, brings it back to a 4 and 4. Suddenly, Liquid find themselves in a good spot again for this round. Nesk, however, will go down. Oh. Pasha lines up a second as resets, will find Joystick a 2 and 3 right now. Still in favor of Furtis Pro, but they don't really have to breach as they would like it to be. So they have to go for an alternate opportunity to go for a plant, but this Goobines is actually going to be stopping uh, the opportunity. Need to be pulled out first, and it's Parlin now in that 1v2 trying to stop it from happening. Shepard's going to see if he can try and stick it, but he won't get all the way as Dan gets the bite back. That is an attack round that has been able to be taken and won by Virtus Pro. They weren't able to do that on the previous map here, so Oregon has led them already more success than it was before. It's their map. It does make sense, but I think they're still working out some of those kinks, some of those problems, some yeah. of those eyes towards just how much attention they can pay towards the swing onto the site. 
Right. And there you have it, that drone hole shot to come to. Ah, it is just a pixel. <laughs> it is, I mean, it's not it's much more than that. There's Pasha getting on, getting the second at the top of the white stairs. I sort of talked about how there has been a tendency from liquid players to swing. They're happy to sort of dabble in that test, see what's going on. Don't let this team set up and get all the way. Nest found the first bit of success, but then Pasha getting up towards the top of white was able to get some of that revenge there. All right. Now, Kitchen is going to be up next, and it is not Kitchen Meeting, as it is one of the signs as well. The yes, camera will be deployed there, but it's Kitchen Dining. And that means a small tower could be a crucial part of the actual attack to come through. He can open up the heart roll from above, and I believe Nesk is going to be setting himself up in what some might call a suicide position. He's going to be out there. There's going to be uh, ADSs ready for him, but he will be playing there until he dies or until he takes down any other enemy that might be trying to go as well for, uh, away from the side of Virtus Pro. So it, it is going to be an all or nothing position. And his main goal, waste as much time as possible and hope to take an important operator off the board. Joystick on the Blitz. That is, for me, an interesting little yeah, combination. Yeah, we don't see that often. You don't really see that every day. I don't even Drone think Fresh would have put that on a bingo card in his wildest dreams. Let's see. What can come on the back of it? The lineup itself has a, has a couple of bits of flirts with danger. You've got Ness playing this power position at the top of Small Tower, and you know it, it's the one, as you said, you've got to sort of force your way through, get rid of those ADSs, try and put the fight onto the shield, or get maybe an ADS to do just this. It'll stop any of the catches, any extra ADSs or discs you might have missed. The break comes against it. There goes the shield. There's a Blitz that takes a little bit of damage, but obviously resets has taken some more. Hello, it's me, Blitz. You're now blind. Swings with the pistol and a little bit of a pocket of execution. A great take to Small as Shepard gets Volps as well. Suddenly we have this reinvigorated performance from the Russians here sitting in the school bus and seeing if they can send someone back to class, but they're not quite ready to learn the full lesson. Lagonis escaped with a sliver of health. Barlu is now thinking about double dipping. But at the same time, a minute 20 of five versus two with a shield to lead this push. Surely they can lock out this dining take. Yeah, this should be locked out, but one kill will go the other way. Palu takes down Dan, who was set up in the school bus. Lagones is quite low on HP, spots out the shield. Joystick takes a lot of damage, actually, from uh, the, the support that's there from Palu. Smoke canisters, however, will be blocking the line of sight. Palu needs to step up big if he wants to stop this win <laughs> to go into the hands of Virtus Pro. But Joystick is already going? digging so deep. He's going all the way towards the kitchen. Palu will find yet another kill. Strings around, Whoa. but couldn't connect onto Shepard and leaves it only up to Lagones in about one HP. Can not last. Furtis Pro, take round three. I mean, Parley was doing his best. Lagones with that teeny bit of health was holding on for as long as he could. And you can see a little bit of frustration there. <laughs> the joystick was like, I'm going over here. I'm going to keep going. The cover and the smoke and the motion. I like to see it because it's often sort of talked about that there are a team and a roster that does their takes as the time and time again, does their plays as the time and time again. Whereas in this situation, you're sort of looking at, you know, these new ideas, these new sort of pushes, beautiful sort of take in the play. They had the second gun with the swing as well. And that, the that funny. stop of Palu's return. Yes, what is funny? That was a warden. Oops. They have, a, have glasses. Did they? Flashed. No. Would have been a good way to use them here. It's a shame that. <laughs> I mean, it's always the meme, right? Like, oh wait, Warden has a gadget. The thing is Warden's about gadget. The thing is about Warden's gadget. Obviously, they went through a change. Yeah, there was. There, it, it's not an instant activation. You don't. No, it takes a bit. It takes a bit. It used to be more powerful in that situation. Now it's sort of like glass mechanic. You gotta be patient and still. Yeah. You can't really do that when a shield. Uh, yeah, he's about to hit no, you. In the I, face. I get it. What would have worked though was a mute jammer. That would. Have. That is real going off. preparation though, and you don't really expect the blitz to be the charge through. No. <laughs> I mean, this, Great this use kinda, of it. It's kind of the thing. You, you don't really expect the blitz to be there. Now Shepard on a shield. We're just relaxing a little bit. It's like now it's your turn for the shield, Shepard. I, I mean, I love looking Dan's at next. I love looking at Virtus Pro. <laughs> yeah, Dan comes out with a fused shield. <laughs> I love looking at Virtus Pro's lineups. I think they, they always like to sort of 
test new things, test new operators in what can be their sort of stand up, standard takes, their standard holds. They're happy to play in the new meta in terms of operators. Not always in terms of maps, though. That's where things sort of go away from them. They don't have the deepest map pools. No, and that could really hurt them the further on they get into the tournament. But of course, they've had a lot of time to get themselves prepared for that tournament and maybe even increase on their map pool here and there. You know, it is only day one. It is only it is. match one for them. So why would they be instantly picking up all those maps they might have been practicing whilst, you know, maybe the basics are just enough to take care of Liquid? At border. Yeah, they've not really played that either. But it's not like... It's a very... Yeah, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to get in trouble if I say it. You'll get more, more of a frag-heavy map I'll than it is... You of pure strategy. Yeah. They've used the Monty to get the clear. As I said, we've seen a, a little bit of a faux pas in terms of their control of knowing where everybody is. That wasn't the problem last time we were here. What was the problem is, well, they hit a wall of utility and they couldn't quite do their execute at the same time. Shepard is making sure that there's a little bit more pressure. They've gone for the freezer side take instead. You do still put the pressure. You can see always was around the top of the hatch itself. They had the can openers, one less that you assume it got open. They draw the attention. They're putting a route through. You cannot just charge your way in, but with the coverage and the break onto the wall, you can hear the canister go. You can see the player is going just as much. The pings onto them. They are now a door. The knock on it, the shield rework hasn't quite come through, so they're happy to still swing and hold that position as the bees force the player, but Shepard's the one with the kit, so they can't do anything else right now. There's three people in the same corner out there for the side of, uh, of Liquid. They really need to try and find it. That's a new position as Ness goes around for a huge flank, but only gets one, and it's not even completely confirmed. It's a down onto Joystick, but it gives an opportunity for the opposing or remaining members to go for a bit of a fight. But as they get picked up again, VP have a good opportunity. 15 seconds, always is going over the top. He's going to go for the drop onto the hatch right around the top of the players here. Lagonis does find the kill. They're going to go for the swing and try and stop the plant itself, but they somehow get it down. Dan holds on as Pash has got the long watch that's watched right back. Joystick and Shepard a shield, and a man that's trying to be the defense of that player gets it locked into the two versus one reset. All that's left here. They're going for the long bit of pressure. Joystick has a sliver of health. Oh. He's not quite knocked out, though. And you can hear it on the opposite end. There's a bit of power back on the side of VP. They find three rounds in a row here on their attack. Yeah, and that was what I was aiming for as well. Of course, both these teams had around a 50% over the last year on Oregon on attack. So First Pro have just managed to get that 50%. Now they need to try and edge over it to make sure that they put themselves in the best possible position for the second half of this matchup. One of the things that we are kind of missing in comparison to the previous map is, well, Volt, actually, one of the people. If anything, he was, as I sort of said, the, the defining factor of a couple of rounds. He ended the game pretty much defining the second half of it. I think he might have been the top KD as well. He popped off. No two ways about it, son. And here, hasn't been able to find a kill yet. Hasn't been able to get himself stuck into the approach. They are still having these moments of swing, still having these moments of confidence. However, with one big missing factor coming through, it really shows a different shape of the pace, and it gives a bit of pace for them to bite in. And obviously, that was the tack timeout called by Liquid. These three rounds in a row, they think, well, this hasn't quite gone the way it wants to. It's not their map. They have the buffer, but they don't want to get there. It's no! somehow it started off like a flawless roundup. First round, they could round with flawless. flawless. Perfect. And then... First row just shows up. It's like, no, 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 no. This is our map. <laughs> we want to go to border. Don't get us wrong. Jesse was confident. He was confident. He doesn't want to be a Very frog. confident. As, as confident as he is Canadian. Have you actually ever ran, like, the DNA uh, sequence to find out if he's actually Canadian? I mean, not that I'm doubting him, but it's like, do we have the hard proof that he is, like, 100% Canadian? You've opened a can of worms, though. Yeah, that's what we got to check it on Liquipedia. Yeah. Is it, would it be on there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to edit it. I'm going to get banned from editing Liquipedia. <laughs> Three rounds in a row, Gladys Pro, and let's see if they can try and do what's done to them and respond to a timeout with just more victory. And going back up towards Dorms, this was where they were able to get there first. It was a 
pretty back and forth over the past yeah. three rounds. It was the closest of the rounds that they have won towards Bond not quite getting it. And if Liquid had got two in a row, this could be a very, very different game we're looking at. It would have been a different game, that's for sure. And if, you know, we remember correctly, the C4 just came in a little bit late. The wall wasn't opened up properly, but still managed to hold on in the end and, and the enough for some pressure to come through. Oh. Ness starts it off great there, takes down Pasha, instantly leaning in. Games as well, hoping to find one more as he sees one go by on that repel, but they also realize we have the entry. We do not need to be more aggressive than this. I was gonna say, that's the sort of change here. Last time, remember, Pasha got control of Bedroom, pretty much uncontested pretty quickly, but didn't go any further and was expecting swings like this. Nesk, he is now in that trophy swing position. He got the first onto the armory window. Virtus Pro maybe expected it to be a bit emptier because, well, it was last time. And just moving into this space, just making this a fight and a contestion is something that has been able to net them that player. Oh no, that's the player with the hard breach. They've lost the Selmas. If the wall gets a little bit locked, they find themselves in a sticky position. The wall that's onto Trophy, uh, or the wall that's onto the, the backside of Trophy, even that leads towards Pit, that is now much more problematic. Three people around the attic there in the pit. Seems like that is going to be the crucial turning point of that entire defense, just so they can get C4s over, but also so they can look into the actual dormitory with the um, uh, mirror windows that they have set up. So that's a bit of a, a question mark right now for the side of BP. Why is there three players in there? How are we going to be dealing with this? Can we maybe even circumvent this? Because if we don't need to take it now, that's even better. Now, Volps is underneath once again, a slightly different position. I'm not sure if Always is trying to hunt them or just prepare for a rotation, but with 40 seconds left, you got to do something. Volps doesn't have to do anything, and there it is, Always. Gets the kill, gets the take. Instantly responded to, though, by Nesk, who's getting one back, keeping that body advantage and keeping the fight into their favor. As I said, it's one of those players that you sort of associate with Oregon throughout the years from the performances that they've put on old and new. And here, they're making sure they've got a new one. 20 seconds, the C4 goes perfectly this time round over the top of the blinds. Palu got his lineup right there. 15 seconds remaining. 15 seconds, a four versus two. Always does find another bite through. They're trying to get the scream up the stairs, a two versus two. Suddenly, Shepherds put a little bit of life back into it, but they've got to go for the plant. The swing, he runs out of bullets, a two versus one, and he can't quite get it, Palu. Just keeps things into Liquid's favor. Not enough ammo in the SMG 33 there to uh, to keep the fight up and actually get the kill to Palu. Could have opened up uh, an opportunity there because that would have meant the player on white still be alive. Could have been the cover for the plan to actually go through, but instead Liquid find themselves with that second round on their defense. Now we'll be headed back down towards the laundry, towards the supply room. The one they were able to win flawlessly before, but then Virtus Pro they brought a shield. And then they were able to just basically shepherd out all these players. So that is something they need to be ready for if that is going to be brought again. And we do see a, a bit of a different kind of, of, of operator lineup. I mean, you don't see it yet. We do see it. We see um, the Thorn coming out. So the Razor Bloom gadgets to come through. Mute Mozzy combo. Castle to be out there. So they're definitely trying to play some information game whilst also slowing down the attackers as much as they can. The game is afoot. Is a foot? Yes. You know this phrase? The body part? No, you don't I know this phrase. It's <laughs> underway. Five seconds remaining. I was just memeing. Ah, uh, the boy has learned to me. And, and the boy has just spilled his water it on almost the table. went wrong. <laughs> it did go wrong. You spilled it. Yeah, but I caught it mid-air because I released it with my thumb somehow. And I. Why did you let it. go of the cup? I don't know. Intrusive thoughts won. <laughs> like Parker when he dribbled on himself during rehearsals yesterday. Out in shame publicly. <laughs> Three to two. And as they approach what is a heftier hold here, the castle, to obviously make things a bit uncomfortable, the wall being instantly double locked, Liquid sort of said, well, they played in the space and we locked it off successfully once before. Let's go back to maybe paying attention elsewhere. They don't want to stuff on the back end of the shield once again. The shield is not here. Yeah. The Monty take, although it was successful, change things up. Change things up because Liquid are a team that can counter strat. They can change things. They can alter their ideas, their approaches. They know how to change if they need to change. 
that's a pretty heavy top floor kind of roam going on right now. You see one all the way in T3, uh, someone up on the back stairs. We see people uh, around the actual attic as well. So it seems like Liquid want to play this everywhere but the actual site. And that means if Virtus Pro do realize this, they have an opportunity to basically bank on the back of that. Now, as resets will find the very first one to always, he's still out in that tower. They now know he's there. And this is the decision that Virtus Pro now needs to make. Do we want to clear him out, or do we let him live? Well, they have the Jackal track. They have the feet being put down on the pressure. They've got long distance angles, but as you said, Reset's sitting there, holding on, time ticking away, and that has been that dangerous sixth member, especially against them. They're going for the take and the pressure. They're blinded and hoping that they can survive a bit longer. No is the answer. Joystick, a very clean response and take. Gets the cams, gets the read, and gets the click of the fingers. Of course, those cams only going to be uh, revealing the default cams and, you know, bulletproofs as well. So it isn't like there's any real hidden things that they're going to be able to see. Of course, still a bit of a nuisance if you are on the defense because your positions can be checked out. The Shepard is driving around with a drone as well. He's going to be finding about way more positions, taking out some new gemmers as well. Could actually lean into uh, opening up. No, they have no way to open up. Always already died, so not necessary is Nest finds joystick. Oh, Nest has just been so problematic here. The energy that he's brought to a team that started to fall away from it. Palu takes bits of damage. Volps takes a little bit more. The player's still tucked, and there's Dan just screaming their way through. But again, tucked behind the soft. Lagonis gets caught out. The spray against it. I don't know if they had the full read, but they've only got about 10 seconds and one body. So now it's technically a two versus two with Pasha head down onto the plant. Watching either side. Dan is tearing them apart. And Virtus Pro, fantastic response here towards things going away from them. A bit of a back and forth, but the timeout used and utilized by Liquid. They've now just got to play their attack ahead of them. That's it, and VP have set themselves up perfectly with that round score, managing to find four attacking rounds. That's better than both these teams, their average. So they're definitely one step ahead right now, and they just need to make sure that they're able to get those three rounds on their defense on the board right now. And they will start off on the basement, they will start off on laundry, as that is where uh, Liquid started it off successfully once. Now they hope to do so themselves as well. I'm kind of curious what game here we're going to get from the sides and the second half. Obviously, where Virtus Pro did quite well was in the opening three rounds, was yep. in the setup on their defense. They do the same here, and the game's over, the map's over. You know, you're, yep. you're sort of in that you're position correct. where <laughs> I can count to seven. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've learned left. that some people can count to 19, so it's just always good to check. Good way secure. It would make things very sticky, and it would send us, obviously, hurtling in towards the border. I know of at least one series that has gone to three maps today. I yep. don't know if that's the only series? I think her Two. No, I think both SSB oh, yeah, and DZ's yeah, yeah. games went no, to, that's true. Went to all three maps. Yeah. And eight teams love three maps. At least There's they not an all overtime, overtime, you know? Yeah. Like, you're looking at it like that. Either way, Liquid, you need to step up on your attack right here, Reload. because otherwise, it's going to be Virtus Pro that's going to find themselves into a map number three that they're unknown for. As one kill comes in for the side of Pasha, Volks responds and manages to escape as Joystick tried to get a lean back in instantly, but Volks already gone before he could. The check further forward, the slow sort of steps into this engagement. A minute gone and two players removed. Does show an increase in pace in comparison to how they went at Clubhouse before, but they've got to make sure they don't fall into those habits that they had a little bit in their early attacks previously where they would go back to thinking and the thinking would take a little bit too long before they had the time towards the execution. The great take onto the utility, the roll on through of Palu with the Twitch drone is able to at least secure one more Goyo canister. We saw how powerful they can be in holding off the time on the site before. And the second is gonna see if they can try and apply a little bit more of that pressure and control. 
You want to get rid of as much of that utility as you can, but second Twitch drone has been taken down. Dan using some of these punch holes here to find himself with a bit of a cheeky angle and get the upper hand, but as he deals about one or two bullets worth of damage, he has to rotate back out, takes a little bit from the DMR, leans back in, finds the kill onto Palu. That's going to be a great one. Now has the opportunity to lean over towards Freezer as well, but with the amount of HP he has, doesn't really want to put himself into that position. I mean, that's the thing, right? You're looking at a minute, so there's loads of times so you want to take a surprise fight, but he has no health. He was lucky to sort of get away with the first rotation when when Parley was watching you with a DMR in the pockets of Twitch, one of the sort of most consistently powerful guns in the right hands at the minute. You expect to die. He got back, double dipped and got the kill. Well, it's turned into the Nesk show, but he's locked out by the quick trade back. Joystick has the stop to it, the end to it. Nesk is still having these big effects, but cannot quite get the full end of the sentence. Lagonis goes for the flash, goes for the plant inside the cover of the noise with Joystick getting one. Even if he gets this down, he'll put his head up towards three Russian guns, making their way closer and closer towards the player. Popped and dropped off. And they know that the round is over at this point there it is. <laughs> I was gonna say there was still still a frag. It, it is a shotgun on the other side. If you're not certain that it's if down, you're not certain, I mean we've seen them drop down. Yes, <laughs> to a, a, a sort of pocket carrot or something it was. No, it was the bailiff that, the bailiff. Uh, that went through. So you want to make sure you want to you want to be careful enough that you don't both go down to the same pump because that happened before. One pump, two kills because both were low on HP. You don't you you don't want to have that in that situation. One pump, two kills. Yeah, one pump, two kills. Nice. A true one pump champ. Just in a different way. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm not responding. <laughs> this is an 18 plus. Yes, it is. Because of violence, but you disgust me. <laughs> Five to two. Virtus Pro, as I said, the danger is in their early half. Has been good. Liquid can adapt. They can adapt fantastically. They've proven it in this game alone, as well as other tournaments, as well as getting themselves here. But the time limit on how they can do that, well, it might technically be zero because you're sort of looking at maybe one site, one swing on each of them before they are looking down border. Yeah, and, but the thing is, I was just watching that last round, you know, as we do as it's our jobs. Um, and <laughs> What? I, I looked at like Paolo not being able to hit those like shots completely with the DMR. He got two shots off. Wasn't yeah, just enough. But Nesk, that one was more obvious. He was like completely next to the person and wasn't able to transfer over the spray I, I as mean, a person swung him. It's like it's tough. It is tough. Nesk is. He feels like he's playing with a lot of pressure, and he is. You're looking at Volps still, unfortunately, not being able to show up to the huge effect they had on the previous map. Lagonis obviously playing the support role. You don't expect him to put the numbers down, but this is the difference of having a player go huge and then not quite getting the same effect in the follow through. Nesk is having to swing into these fights and engagements because he, with his experience and his skill, knows we have to put pressure on two. And it forces you to take these gunfights that are a little bit, you know, more awkward, more sort of disengaged from what can be the practice transfers, yeah. the practice approaches. And it's like you don't expect Nesk to miss those shots, right? He's like one of those top caliber players, like one of the best that's ever touched a game. And you see this like that, it's like, ooh, I love this. Oh, the flat take, it's very audible though. And Shepard's able to get a second. There's Nesk again, still knowing the importance. Gets the fight for Joystick. Once again, gets the response. The kick goes cold in the middle of the room. Volps, he was huge in the first map. He unfortunately can't follow it through there. Six to two. No timeout. Nothing now stopping this Russian revolution in this series. I like how Dan was still like upset about something that happened because he's like <laughs> making like all kinds of wavy, like how am I supposed to hit this? As, uh, they, they won that round pretty flawlessly. I mean, it was they, they tried to go for a quick play, completely shut down by Virtus Pro. And this game where we were expecting like, okay, Liquid, they just really warmed up in that previous game. If they managed to keep that going, it could be, you know, a quick end for Virtus Pro here. And then suddenly it's the complete opposite. I guess, all right, so you look at that play that they did, it's a known play. The the quick zip across, you go into the window. However, you usually do it with the window, the double window take, that was done, the push up Y, and I think one on trophy. Yeah, yeah, that was done, that makes sense. 
but that was missing the one ingredient of we need something to distract from this. Whether it's an EE1D, whether it's a Docker Be Call, yeah. whatever it is that covers a little bit of that chaos, I'm not going to say it's a yeah, silent exactly. zip, but it was a very easy pickup. Two players turned and faced it. Yeah. You are going into a slaughter. And of course, it didn't help that someone just walked in front of the window at the moment that starts, and he's like, oh, hey, man. <laughs> There's someone coming. Hello. Hey. Um, How you doing? But hey, what could be the last round here of this map before we head towards our decider border? Virtus Pro have looked to become quite a dominating force over Liquid. They've been able to just really set themselves up in the best way, really. Like, the, 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 the fan... The flawless round in, in round one, which they lost against them. Then round five, they, meant they, they lost another round themselves as well. But ever since, VP has been in charge. Now, Forbes did start off with an opening kill. Nesk finds himself in the middle of the side, but eats some buckshot right through the face. And as a result, we're back to a four and four. So the early opening that they managed to get, really not able to back into. Shepard again playing with that shotgun close to split is about to be finding himself in some contact. Two pumps necessary to find Volps but eventually will shut him down as he didn't check the corner. Shepard's still out there in set corner. A very well, difficult position to get rid of. Well there's a spray around, there's a swing, there's a three versus one and here I think we are looking at a three map position. Palu could be a difference maker here. He definitely has the capabilities, but look at how much sort of utility is still in the pockets of the remaining players. They also have the verticality. They also have the full structure of the site itself. It is a sticky situation. The throw of the drone, the chance on the swing onto the back of split. They're just waiting for it. And Joystick is that final throw, the power the VP has shown up a little bit more on their map, but we are going to, I mean, a very exciting, powerful map after this. Yeah, we're gonna be headed towards Border, which is known for aggression, for pure gun skill, gunplay to come through. Of course, there is strategy involved, don't worry, but it is just a bit more of that raw gun skill that we really rely on. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry. There's there strategy some, involved. There'll be some strategy. It's not just a rank pickup game, Wilson. What? Yeah, I'm, I mean, it is a six invitational after all, right? So, do you know what it is after all? What is it after all? A quick break before we're back with the desk.
Well, that was an impressive turnaround from Virtus Pro. We now look to this series as a little bit more. It's uh, no longer two and done. We're going to see a lot more from Liquid and Virtus Pro. However, we've got to break down Oregon first. Oregon, a map that we went into expecting Virtus Pro to feel a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. But Jess, you, you got to say, that's that's the kind of performance we needed to see. Out of them. It certainly is. Then, I mean, I told you I wasn't worried. I told you I, I was expecting to see a border, and we've got a border coming up next. I do think for Oregon, VP looks so much more at home. Obviously, it's their map pick, and a BO3, that's what you're expecting teams to come through, win their picks. But VP's attacks in particular, so much better the second time around. We saw Shepard going huge. Not a player you often talk about topping the scoreboard for VP, but he can absolutely put up those numbers when he needs to, and today he did. Well, and it's also, I mean, we've seen Shepard numerous times put up those numbers, and it's, again, like a lot of these teams here at SI, they do have a five-man roster that can really totally. step up in any given moment. And, you know, even talking about players, you know, we saw Volps last game. He was popping off tremendously. This game, he really tanked off. So it happens, but that's the whole point of being on a five-man roster is if you aren't having a good game, you do have the four other players to pick up your slack, allow you to still be a good teammate, give the call outs that you need to, and still perform the way that you need to perform outside of getting a stat line. Look, I, I guess that's probably the concern for me is more so how this game's finished. 7-2, we didn't see any attacking rounds from Liquid, and their defensive rounds were few and far between. Two, in fact were all they were able to amount, uh, and they were quite separated as well, Chris. Certainly, and I think, you know, you look at Oregon as a map where you're wanting to see more defensive rounds than a 2-4 two, yeah. two, split from Liquid to start yeah. things off. That basement's usually considered one of, if not the best, bomb site in competitive siege they lost it twice and yeah. so i think the huge variety we saw from vp the different ideas they wanted to bring to the table the different things that they were bringing um even on the same bomb site multiple rounds we did see them catching liquid off guard never really letting them learn never letting them adapt and that's not something we're known for vp yeah. typically this is a team where you'd say like historically they will run the best strat and they will stick to it. Yep. This time we saw a lot of variation, a lot of cool ideas, and I think that really came in clutch for Virtus Pro. Yeah, I mean the shield play and going to that fourth yeah. round with the Monty, with the Grim, forcing people out of Freezer, and like from a player perspective, just to give you guys a little more insight on that, that Monty clearing all the Freezer and pushing down into that hallway, he is essentially feeding all the information to his team to let them know that they're back in sight, yep. no one's in the hallway, maybe someone's playing pillar, so the people that are pushing down from laundry side or from Freezer side are then able to collapse on site, and that's why we saw that bomb go down as smoothly as we did. And not only was it just the uh, the monster, but we also had another little play uh, from the Blitz the round earlier, yeah. Jesse. Yeah, round three, they used a great little Blitz play, but it wasn't even just the Blitz. Everybody came on through. I want to show you, they're clearing the small tower here, and there's a Warden up there. It's Nesk. But all of the utility is going to come together. First is an EMP, gets caught by an ADS. Second EMP goes through. Lion Charge goes through. Shepard on the Ash, not a, an operator you expect from the hard support, clears the shield, and then Joystick jumps on in. Now you're thinking, it's a Warden. Why are you running a Blitz at a Warden? That's because the EMP had just gone out. Warden's glasses don't work because of that EMP. So he's able to rush on through, clear him out, and notice how not a single person died. Very little damage onto the Blitz. Otherwise, it's so clean. It's so practiced. Everybody is working together. That's the type of coordination you don't get unless you really run a strat over and over and over again. And that was executed to perfection. And to touch up on that, that's the beauty about Siege, as whether you're a new viewer or an old viewer, this is a siege at the highest level, and this is where you can really see where the team play, the coordination of how to abuse operators or how to even use operators and their utility properly. And Jesse explained that perfectly. Those EMPs completely countered and negated all of that info or that vision from um, Warden that he can't now use. And then Blitz is now viable once again, blinds yeah. him. They get a free kill. Easy pickings. It's kind of like two master classes put back to back, right? You saw mm -hmm. Blitz and you saw the monster. Exactly. And they, and they played it beautifully. And that's what we need to see going into the third map. Well, that's just it, right? Speaking of the third map, that's where we need to start to hone in a little bit more, turn our attention, because Liquid, they had a little bit of a rocky map, but that's that's nothing in comparison to where we're going. We're going to border here. I mean, yeah. what are the expectations, Jesse? The expectations? There are no expectations, because Virtus Pro, the last time they played border was June 2020. 2020. Obviously, a completely different roster. They've changed cores. Nothing really resembling that. Technically, the org is undefeated. 3-0 lifetime record. But realistically, when you're looking at this, this is a blank slate. We have no idea what VP play on border. We've never seen it before. So for Liquid, you're walking into the dra uh, into the den in the dark. You have no idea what's coming up. And it is border. I mean, there's only. Uh that many plays you can play yeah. it, right? It's a map that uh, often encourages very early gunfights. So 
Some people have said it's antithetical, uh, antithetical to VP style. I guess we'll find out today. I can't even spell that. But anyways, <laughs> no, I think I think it's great for Liquid specifically. Well, not great for specific. Sorry, it's great for VP going to this. They just came off a strong win on their map pick. Now you're going to border that. Liquid is going to have no idea what you do in terms of if they want to watch something old in the past, which typically really isn't, you know, it's going to give you kind of an idea of what they do, but they could have changed everything drastically. So to like try to use that info, it's not going to be as great. And you're really going to have to focus up here and really pay attention to what Liquid's doing on top of also VP managing their best and what they can implement into Border. Well, we are going into this blind, so it's only fair that the blind do lead the blind. Emmy and Hap wait for the matchup. Blind? Are we blind? Apparently, I can't. I can't see. I you have didn't. hands in front of your eyes. Oh, it's making things easier to see. That explains it. Yeah. Do you know what's really cute? What is? Cute? I like that Laxing uh, and Jesse have dressed as Barbenheimer. As I didn't pay attention. One of them's in bright pink. <laughs> well, maybe you are blind. <laughs> Point has been proven. Yeah. But okay. it's one to forty-nine. This is the exact reverse of the predictions of what it was on the previous map. So you are all still split down the middle at home. Congratulations on keeping consistent. I legitimately do not know which way this is going to go. Last time Liquid played it, they lost it against uh, a little team called W7M. I've heard of them. Yeah, you've heard of I them, I think right? I've heard of them, yeah. 8-7 the score. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's not like I was against W seven M. That yeah, I, I think any score that goes that distance against W seven M is like, oh, that's good. Grim is gone. No beast, not for you. Ying is gone. No blinds, not for you. Yeah, it's a standard sort of consistent ban there. You're looking at the quick pitch aggression. Grim isn't the most standard sort of removal. Fenrir is going to make some of those swings that Liquid like to do a little bit more palpable to the palette of destruction. What are you calling? Fen's army. Oh. 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 It's almost like we do this for a living. That was a pure gamble, by the way. But there's only really five operators that get bends. Yeah. And there's a short a short list. Yeah, it was like a, take from. a one and four, 25%. Imagine, imagine you're in the past when Grim was introduced. Uh huh. And you would go, Grim will be banned. <laughs> and it's legitimate. I remember when it like it just came out. It wasn't like the most impactful opera. Like it's a unique gadget, but the it impact wasn't, it wasn't the no, most. It wasn't just being. Was just not. I think played. that's a very kind way of describing Grim. Be kind. Wasn't right? the most impactful. Was I factually correct? You were. That's what I mean. <laughs> but he, he's been getting into the metamorph after the, you know the reworks that came through with the instant deploys of the bees. Um, yeah. Larger radius. Uh, long, longer time of being active as well. It's great. And now, yeah. really good at being a sort of area denial. Not because it hurts you. He's a problem. He's a problem maker. Yeah. He's, he's allowing for a me. movement and shaker. What was that word that Jesse mentioned on the desk? Because Lack said I can't spell that. I don't even know what that word is. I wasn't listening. They weren't listening. No. It's very they might think I'm blind. I'm not. You're deaf. I'm just deaf to them. <laughs> deaf to analysts. Just Would you, whatever Australian that is, it's hard to tell them apart. Uh, <laughs> they can sass us. I love that we get Australians here because they're great at sass. They can sass us. They have a very small window to do it. I have 45 minutes of a game ahead of me, probably. Yeah, that's very true. We have I have 45 time minutes, Manic. Right now. Strap in. <laughs> You've chosen war with. You've chosen war, Manic. Sass. I don't need to do a type five. I can go full George Carlin. <laughs> right, to the game. To the game zero a piece, and we're propped up and ready for maybe a quick look through here on towards the bathroom. The thing about border is it is a very dangerous map at all points. It's very thin. You can get ideas from one corner and go, I'm going to approach here, and suddenly someone shoots you from the opposite side of the map itself. Resets gets the first. Dan Fuck is back. gone. They will lose a frost, it's a nice gun, but you assume the gadgetry is already in place, causing problems out and about. But that is one of the first and uh, that's one of the earliest first bodies of blows we've had across the three maps. Yeah, overall it's been like around the one minute 30 mark uh, and then, you know, two to one minute mark where we've really seen those first blows come in. It's not like we've seen any like 20 seconds left on the clock first kill hit to that moment. Yeah. 
but it's it's generally been a bit later uh, that's for sure now as we are holding off it's just right now liquid trying to find themselves at an opening just opening up some walls or taros are being sent in Excaros are being sent out and all of that is just trying to work towards a common goal. And this seems like they want to go for an archive plan. There's basically no pressure towards the armory <laughs> whatsoever right now as Lagonus is just making himself. All the blinds are coming through onto Shepard, but Pasha is able to see through it and sees right through one and two. Oh. That's the third Pasha! Locks it down inside Fountain and fills it up with the body of Liquid. That's four! Now we have had an ace today. Will we find our second? With 30 seconds left, you're up against Palu. Flores, long banned in this series so far. The bait of the play, no! Palu locks it down, but Pasha has earned the lie down. More than enough has been done. 20 seconds here, a three versus one. He's looking for a fight with two players tucked into that corner. One's low, one's high. He's got to make his way through. Can't find the first. What a round from Pasha. That was insane. It was all from the same, like, two square meters as well. He was just sitting there like, okay, one, step to the side, two, step to the side, and that's the third one to come through. And as he quickly checks the long hallway and comes back, oh, there's a fourth surprise waiting for him there, and he managed just to just uh, shut them all down so uh, cleanly. Attackers have recovered. Definitely cutting the pie the right way there. No! <laughs> I don't know what they said, because I don't speak Russian, but I, it's, I, it's something, who is the, and I assume like boss or end. Who is the best? King or the best. Oh, it could be it, yeah. Oh, is that what he said? Who is the guy? Who's the guy? Yeah. He's the guy. He's the guy. He's the guy. I mean, what a first round there from VP, but we've seen them take the first three rounds and then not get much more than that. So, there's a full game. There's a full map. There's a full place to play ahead of them. Liquid here. A slight knock in this early lead-in. They got the first body and then got bodied for every other engagement, pretty much. There's no other way to pull up. <laughs> it's, just, it's just what happened. They all tried to take out the same man, and they all just got given the exact same answer. This is an interesting point about this map, though, is when you talk about things Virtus Pro does, usually classic comes to mind. Yeah. This isn't always the second pick site nowadays. Usually you'll see teams sort of stretch themselves over towards bathroom. There's a big preference onto it instead. However, once upon a time, it was yeah. armory, it was vents, and it was struggle for the third site. Yeah, but with the rework, they really made the, the bathroom uh, tellers site to become actually viable. And, and then as a result, we see it quite a lot right now. Virtus Pro, you know, still living back in the day in, in terms of the site selection, not wanting to go for what is hot and new right now, but it was true and tested. Of course, they'll go there most likely as the, the third side. I don't expect them to, uh, to take the other option, which is customs, of course. And Splash Banks and an E on the pop. It is just there to allow Liquid to take some ground over this ground floor. Look at and this. Hey, Nesk is in the site. Hey, man. Nesk inside the site. Lagonis also inside the site, going for the plant. Virtus Pro, you're about to get a very terrifying wake up call now. Yeah, you got the one player, but it's a post plant. It's only, there's only 40 seconds left. The Solus is lost. They want to take the drop onto this. They can see the grid locks. They know it's being watched. It's resets with the lockdown. Resets gets joystick from the verticality. Lagonis gets another. In fact, there it is. The two for Lagonis. As well as getting the plant down, he's sort of dictated this round. They had a return to form and force. Volps gets one, always gets one right back. 20 seconds. They still got to go for the retake on their own site, and it's always, always in this position here. One versus three. Not enough time to get to the kid at this point, so the round's already lost, but he can at least get a body or two on his way through. This one that's about to be on his left hand side, but he won't even see them. Great response from Liquid. Yeah, good read again to come through. It's not the first one that we've seen from them in the matchup against uh, Virtus Pro here, but they realized this is just safe. Like we can we can move through, enter from Passport, get to themselves inside, and go for the plant. And you see Nesk, he's holding off for that verticality. He's trying to make sure no one was going for the actual uh, diffuser planter at that moment in time. And as they found Nesk, oh. <laughs> no one thought to realize that Oh, maybe the plant's going down and we need to go back towards the side until three seconds after when that time started ticking. 
And this is kind of what we expect in a map like Border. It is good gunplay to come through, but also quick rounds with these kind of reads to come in. I mean, we, we had the team inside of Europe at Wild. They really love to do like just plants and rush those plants. Like they needed only two, three things. They took those and they went for the plant. Boom, round over in a minute. And it's kept doing that. It got really good at that. So it is definitely possible on this map. As we now head towards the bathroom and tell us to uh, find a turret tree site. Ten seconds left. Okay. Back and remaining. forth on a third map on border with players showing up. Beautiful. Attackers are moving to defuse the bomb. I love a little bit of engagement, a little bit of explosiveness. This is the perfect time for it. That's a way to uh, to end it as well, just with that explosion. After that. And go on to uh, to rest for the rest of the day and prepare yourself for your matchup tomorrow. Both these teams, of course, want to get that victory, want to get that one up over one another. As it is, I mean, we mentioned it before. It doesn't like mean you are out of the group if you lose this one. And both these teams should have enough caliber where they could stay into their group without you know too much of a trouble. They should be able to win at least one of those games. But winning this one early on takes out so much of the pressure already, especially because they both see each other as, as huge competitors. I like that. After having Flores removed from a couple of maps, more than happy to bring some of the demolition of those drones. It's a lot of soft on this map. There's a lot of walls that can be yep. cracked for even longer angles, and we know they can be ferocious with the right guns and the right positions. They had the bite straight through onto the site itself. Bathroom will take a little bit more work as they steady their way through. Joystick on the second story is watching. Might be about to find a nest fight. There's a bit of a dance outside the door in that second and caught just in the corridor, always in 90, but may as well have been Narnia. For how much attention they were paying towards that approach, maybe lost by the cover of this, the very noisy gridlocks as Palu gets Pasha. We find ourselves careening towards a body advantage for Liquid. Phone call going off right now as well. Dan, very vulnerable in his current position. Some of the actual tracks are being shot out. So uh, Reset sees that happen, but doesn't really have the opportunity to respond because he's very focused on that one player up above. He heard the phone go off. Cannot really uh, try and put his attention elsewhere now because Dan is in a prime position to actually try and make sure that that top floor stays in control off the side of Virtus Pro or comes back into control of Virtus Pro. Now resets as he finds himself, just holding off the angles, just making sure that no one is going to be using that hatch against them. That's his sole goal here. He doesn't need to clear out Dan as long as he makes sure that Dan doesn't have the opportunity to play the hatch out there. And as Dan is slowly starting to come around, he will find a kill into Ness. Does he know about the second? No, he does not. The kill's about to come through, but Whoa. we find ourselves in a two and two Team situation kill. out of nowhere. I was wondering what happened in that engagement, and I think so is unfortunately liquid, but at least. They had the wherewithal to keep themselves in a bit of calm there. They were tucked in. It's the danger of this map. You're sort of slowly skirting around corners, trying to get that first foot into the fight. Two rounds in a row, two to one. And I think it might be the first time we've had a back and forth in the opening rounds. Uh, I mean, Oregon was also 1 0, 1 1, 1 2. Feet right. So it's, it's, it's the same, just different team right now that's happening. So, as we get underway back to Armory, we are most likely headed towards the round that First Pro was able to win. But it wasn't just the setup that worked really well, it wasn't just the team play that worked really well. It was Pasha. Two square meters, finding four kills, and dealing loads of damage to that last player, allowing for an easy cleanup for the rest of his team. I think that's the sort of moment here right now. You can feel an intensity in the approaches of Liquid that we didn't have on Oregon. Yeah. They, I, well, okay, one player had it on Oregon, which was Nesk for my money, kept on stepping back in, kept on getting himself into the engagement. This time, all five of them there. All five of them are more than happy to play that role. And when you have that, you have this. You have responses that are multifaceted. You have multiple bodies swinging into the engagement. 
perfect line of success. You are rubbing your hands together. Yeah, we have an Amaru. Oh, oh. Now, where is that going to be used? <laughs> That's a, like, sneaky, sneaky yeah. Amaru. But where is it going to be used? Is, is it going to be, like, through the sandwich window? Is it going to be through the hat shot? Uh, I love the hat shot. Somewhere? Give me the hat shot with the cover if you try and take control of office. I mean, you have E1Ds as well. And, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the bit of, you hey, know, distraction you talked about Oh, earlier. I talked about that. It's nice when things come together. This is what I love. Okay, so the hat that we've just seen Palu roll and run past there. If you can cause a bit of destruction and chaos, especially if you can get some coverage of smokes, which they don't have, but they have, oh, every single flash in existence, you might be able to cause some destruction. The other way is get aggro up into the small box. Draw some attention elsewhere. See if you can put the fight in. They might even use it here for the first take no onto way. the back of CC. You should be going up this one. This is so open. As soon as that hatch breaks, there's going to be one or two people that... Oh, he's going to do it anyway. He's going to grab the hatch. This one is quite risky. He needs to check his drone first. There's no one checking him close. But what about the hallway as the E1D pops? Phelps is soon going afterwards. Is someone watching him? Yes, they are. And Phelps loses his life. Oh, there's at least the bite back. They're keeping things even. Nask swings around with Pasha getting one of his own. Lagonis is knocked right back out the door. Resets. Needs to offer some support. But all of them seem to have a goop mind in their foot. All the health on the side of Vardas Pro right now. All the players have that support and structure. Another single goo mine would be a bit deadly and always is about to tick to having one more. Pasha is ready to clip a wing of a player as well. It will just take a breeze from that DMR to lock out any of the remaining Liquid players here. They've got themselves tucked right close to see if they can get a bit of a snappy shot onto the first engagement. The swing is a bit wide, but as I said, it'll just take a sliver of damage. Dan has gone for walkabouts with resets paying a bit of attention. The spray through the soft almost downs resets because of how low his health is. Now he's just sitting on even less, but he has gone aggressively background, leaving Ness alone inside the site in what is now a two versus one as resets wins out on the backside of the fight, but there's 20 seconds. No kit, it is just a bloodbath right now. They had to go back for it. They couldn't get the end of it. Pasha still driving, Virtus Pro. Again, I, I understand what they wanted to do. They wanted to take control of CCTV and break room with like some quick fashion out there. And of course, the goal was to get the Amaru up there and challenge the person on that door, but also have the insane, like instant kind of locking from the opposite side. But it, it just kind of didn't really work out. Everything was just a, a slightly off the mark, slightly off the tempo, and they find themselves basically with three 10 HP members, with just a single shot being enough to get that kill. And Pasha just locking it off with the pistol in the end there. I was almost gonna say, it's like having a DMR right now is kind of a disadvantage when you're playing against players that have such low HP, because all you need is one bullet. All you need is one bullet. You want the fire rate at that point, doesn't matter where you hit them. If they're far away, great. You can hit yeah, through exactly. soft, and it's like, slow. ah, my arm, I'm dead. Um, which you can't really do with uh, a quick fire SMG. However, if they are four feet away, yeah, sort of, sort of less. If you're challenging them on the breach as well, yeah, if you challenge them on the breach, angle, which is entirely what Liquid did, they got themselves close. They knew what they were up against, but they also knew what they had to do to try and find some success. Winning the fight on the back end was a great bit of motion, but Nesk was in a position where he couldn't pull back. He's in a two versus one, and then they decided to go and get the kit back as well, rather than try and go for the two versus two fight. I mean, those are the calls and the plays. It's very easy for me to sit here and sort of say this is the ways that they could win, this is the ways that they yeah. could lose. They are in the intense position of playing the game. We also have the all-seeing eye, right? Yeah. It's, it's always the... We have every single bit of information you could possibly want, except for the calls from the players. Whereas the players, they have the calls from the players in their own drones, but they lack the oversight that we yeah. have. So it's always a bit of that balance that we need to find. 2-2, two, though. Two, Virtus Pro able to win the, the Armory twice. Still yet to find that round on the opposite side of things. This one was a quick rush last time around from Liquid. They spotted an opportunity, they went for it, they took the ground, they go for the plant. No one of Virtus Pro even knew that that was happening at that point. We're in a completely different round already though because of the fact that there's only a single Liquid player inside the building and of course he's holding off a great angle as then our resets both go quite low in a bit of a skirmish. But we don't really see the same amount of pressure from Liquid early on inside. Oh, resets goes down, but Ness gets 
Dan. I'm not entirely sure what got Reese's down. I think that might have been a goo mine in the window frame. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it was a gentle downing. It wasn't the sound of no the bullet no that tracers. led to it. No shots, no nothing. It was a ow, and he went down. Stubbed his toe. Stubbed his toe. Now always is in this fountain position where we've seen huge plays before, but remember where the site is and remember how quick this round was last time. Fox is going to see if he can try and get some replication of that. Does the drone say, yep, you're free to swing around this corner. However, the verticality has been, well, cleared a little bit. We saw them force the player out of the position. That's the important motion that allows them to do this. As soon as that fountain player is gone, as soon as they have some eyes elsewhere, they can move in, tuck the corner, go for the call and force the player into a position where nobody can watch cams or drones either. That dead player of Dan isn't going to do anything apart from say, uh-oh. They go for the swing. Palu gets one. There's the drop in the fight back end as Pasha does find Volps, but they're concerned about the swing elsewhere. They don't have vertical. You know where the kit is, but as soon as they get caught out from the one tuck player, they can at least get revenge. A three versus one. That ends just as quick. Liquid keep the advantage in their favor. Three to two. VP seem unable to win a site outside of Armory right now. And whilst we saw a different kind of game from Liquid, right? Like they wanted to take that top floor control, but it didn't really have the opportunity to take it. So where did that lead them? Back to a direct horizontal take and a plant in the same corner they did before. And it worked out for them. VP unable to find a good, solid response to that. And now back to bathroom tellers. Again, also won by Liquid when they were attacking this. But VP really looking to make this a 3-3 scoreline to really put themselves in the best opportunity for the second half. You're sort of looking at attack onto border. You're looking at yourself where you have that momentum working yeah. for you. You're looking at... It's not the easiest to defend. It's paper thin. Like It's paper thin. I've, you only need one or I've two positions it, and you cut the map in half. said it as many times as you could make a paper thick book. I think one of the things that might cause some concern is Virtus Pro can be slower to set up and take than what we're seeing from Liquid. They can be a little bit more predictable. Yeah. And we've seen Liquid respond quite well to that on previous maps. We've seen them swing into the approach. We've seen them try and sort of lock it down and, and cause problems here. The thing is, if slow cl uh, comes with clinical, you are not going to be surprised by any of like, these jump outs that are usually quite prevalent in border and, and, and do disrupt your attacks quite a bit. So that's kind of the question then. If Virtus Pro is going to be slower under attacks, are they at least going to be clinical and, and, and surgical? But they can care oh. of these players. Thank Pasha you, loses his life. And that is going to be the armory basically under control of Liquid already. That's something he'll probably be beating himself up for here. I mean, he's defined two rounds that were won and he's been locked out just from getting caught on a rotate. Nask able to sort of just swing up and say, how you doing? Sit out the rest of this round, mate. Always uh, one of those uh, members currently holding off two crucial positions, the metal stairs, but also the rotation into the armory. But they also realize, like, I cannot really stay here and put myself in this dangerous position because I cannot watch both angles at the same time. And whilst it's great to have both of them under control, you're going to have to make those choices. And you know, the drones are currently flooding into the side are going to be telling them, OK, armory is clear. And it looks like Archives is clear as well. So let's just take that crown and let's start preparing for what we actually need, which is going to be the office as always rotates back into CCTV, takes a little bit of damage as it goes back towards 90. Might actually be picked up Ooh. as he tries to get himself to office. Volps finds that kill and brings it to a two minute advantage. I mean, you talk about clinical, that was surgical. Just down the line of catching the player as they try to get themselves to a bit of safety. Dan has stepped in at the top of the meadow. Stairs, or these and stairs. The Shepherd is the one that's just creeping their way around the bottom of the metal. Hit the beepers. They are steadily being pushed further and further back. I'm not sure if Lagonis has been able to get the control of the cameras for the approaching team, but we saw a default that was up at the top of those stairs. There is the slow read through the approach to close down. There's 50 seconds all the time for them to put the advantage on this and get themselves to 4-2 half. 
They're ready to go for an execute, or at least they're getting themselves ready. Some people above the hatch. We have players outside the window. They're just looking to isolate one of these players and really Calling collapse together. The phone calls go off. That usually means it's go time. And as Nest goes through, he misses the opportunity to neutralize Dan. If he would have found that kill, it could have been game over for the side of Virtus Pro in this half. Flash brings now coming through to try and guide in their player. But Whoa. another one goes down by the side of Dan, and he rotates all the way around. But that means that he's being spotted because the player is deep, you know. Lagonis is going to see if he can try and stick the plan in the meantime. They know that there's the pressure, but the pressure is on this to swing around. The cover comes against them. Volps gets there. The player stepped into the window protection point. And Palu finds the remaining couple of kills. Liquid. They knew some of that was going away from them, but they had themselves that adaptation, that rotation, and that response towards just where things had gone wrong. And you could see Dan was so stuck in the decision they wanted to make, the one that they needed to make. Yeah. And it left them, well, here, 4-2-2, two, two, Liquid are in an advantageous position. However, they are on defense. So if they can't quite find the way to shut down some of the approaches as we had on Oregon, which was a, a good start that got a little bit away from them. Yeah, for sure. And then, then it is going to be quite problematic. And just think back about Dan there, like, he gets the injury on the window. I mean, the player is not going to be able to fight back. However, it's a living drone at that point. It's going to be giving away the information. The players in the bathroom know exactly when he's going to be trying to go for the jump through that wall. So don't really have to worry about it until you're told to worry about it. So that's why you saw him hesitate there, because if I go, I'm probably dead. If I don't go, I can live to fight for like a little bit later in this round. As long as that player is up there, you're left. not going to be able to, to find yourself on the top of that. So, Liquid, they win that first half, put themselves up 4-2 to two on their attack. VP now need to equalize that score or improve it if they want to find themselves with that first victory. The first start is not actually against the site that they led through. We're not finding ourselves into the opening of Armory instead down the side of site that became a big problem for them. The pace in the plant play against the vents hold that they had wasn't quite anything that led to some success here, whether it's the shake that saw us with the shotgun. It's going to make things very awkward. You have to clear out this vertical position. Otherwise, well, you're probably just going to get executed. I mean, it's not just that. They've also set themselves up in the bathroom. There, there is a couple of barricades. Sure, they're easy to take down, but just the threat of the player being out there uh -huh. basically makes it impossible to just waltz in and try and get that plant down because they can just look in from one of the angles they've made. Oh, default plant spot. Let's take them down. So that's off the cards right now. That means they need to take out vertical control first and to clear out the bathroom if they want to go for a plant inside of the workshop there. So that really leaves it up to ventilation. But that's a window hopping. It's also not really ideal. Reload. They're trying to find this first pick. They're trying to find this first play. As I said, the concern of the sort of slow setup might be something that gets punished out. by what is a very mobile team. There's the, the low run and the route that's coming to their favor. Nesk entirely blinded, but there are players around Fountain and around the swing to offer any support, so he's not entirely lost. The E1D catch in the middle, and there's the reveal of the player in what was once upon a time a very easily grenaded position. Always oh, does get Parley was the first take though. So as this is slowly being surrounded, Parley was playing the verticality. We had that of Solus inside office. There's the swing and the pressure further, but they don't quite pay attention towards the motion of Volps. Saves what is steadily becoming a pro an improbable position. And they actually just pull out. Now they've got the drop on the hatch. They've got the escape. They've said, we're just going to die if we stay here. So why not leave? They always have the opportunity to come back up, right? So they can just leave. There's multiple staircases, especially as soon as a plant starts to go down. The attacking team is going to be split, and that is the perfect opportunity to come back up the metal stairs or to go back up on those uh, those east staircases and try and find yourself in the right and best way to do so. Shepard finds the kill into Volps, and that is an opening onto the direct side. It's done by the way of the Boogie, who opened up the floor earlier, so definitely using that verticality out here, which is basically flooding the remaining defenders out of the site, which means they need to hold off angles if they want to hold it. Shepard is just being 
harassed by that drone, being hit multiple times. The Gumai now as well. A lot of damage taken, but he finds himself in the sight and can go for a plant. Gonna see if he can just get the stick quick. And there's resets that says no. They had the position. They had barely any time. The drop on the hatch is easily picked up by resets. And even if you still have two remaining players, we find ourselves back on Clubhouse spiritually. They had all the players still standing and they just did not have that execute. And that is that cause for concern right now, because if we're getting the clubhouse attacks, well, then we're not getting any Virtus Pro attacks. I am baffled by how that round played out. There was, no, there was no pressure coming back up top from the side of Liquid, as, as far as I could see at least. The complete flooring was opened up. If you plant in that position, there's only two doors that you need to hold off and that one rotation. If anything, that rotation might be more important because that gives a direct line of sight. The door is, is a bit of a closer swing that needs to happen. It's not a tight angle as this. This should have been watched from above, especially because you still had three players left. Why wasn't everybody watching a flank or making sure that they couldn't be pushed from that position? Again, great clutch, by the way. Great clutch. Nothing to say about that because managed to sneak by at the right moment, realized if I'm not going to do anything, the plan goes down. They have vertical control. They can just look down upon us and make sure that we can never get the counter defuse in. And that's kind of the thing. You just have to throw your body at it at that point and hope that it solves the issue. It solved the issue in this case. You can see some frustration there, obviously, from Dan and you sort of look at the frustrating thing right now is Dan and Joystick cannot quite get into the gun game here. It's not entirely their responsibility. It's as it never is. But as I sort of highlighted on Volps, who had a great first map and a quiet second map, if you have that bounce back and forth, you'll find yourself become arguably even more frustrated when things aren't quite connecting to that level. And we know what these two are capable of on that entry roll, on that sort of fragging roll that they sit in. If those two players aren't getting the connection, well, then who is? And it becomes that worrisome step up 5-2. They still have the breath of fresh air that they can try and utilize and see if they can put some damage in. Hey, to be fair, they were only able to win one site on their defense and then they lost the others. It's still all to play for, even if it is that dire. It definitely is. And, and you know, at some point you would say there's no reason to panic yet. However, you're two rounds away from losing the matchup in its hole, so it's a slight reason to panic at this moment, especially if this round will go Liquid's way, because that will be four opportunities to lock out one of the two sides that have already won before. But that is something you uh, you don't really want to go up against at that point. Openings will be made, though. Shepard taking small amounts of damage. Palu does realize there's a player that was about to be entering right through that. Whoa. Trying to go for the fight there. And the rate of fire will win from Joystick against the uh, DMR that was trying to put some accurate shots out. Joystick instantly will go down himself afterwards, as I believe that was Volps getting out some good shots. I don't know. I think it might have been resets Could've that been. gets the fight. Volps did get the kill onto Dan at the same second as the swing coming elsewhere. Again, this is Liquid, what they do very well here against Virtus Pro throughout this series. So far, been step into the approach. They seem to know and habitually have a method of going, okay, well, they're going for this, so here's the fight. We, in fact, saw Palu lean into the fight of the verticality, even though he lost it, but he had the support elsewhere. A minute left on the clock, Emmy. What do they have control of? The opposite side of the map. There is nothing there that gives them an opportunity to try and go for this plant safely. Verticality are in the hands of Liquid. Horizontally, they're nowhere there either. Oh, Nest oh, finds no. always who opens up a door. Didn't even know the player was out there. Pasha now on the hunt. What are you doing, Virtus Pro? You do not have the time to go hunt these players down. You need to get a plant down, and it is bathroom tellers. This is just a little bit tragic now. You can see they're a bit in their own heads. The pings come through. He's hot pinged. He knows they're aware of it. So he still goes for the pressure on the fight and takes it. There's only so many places the player could be. But Ness, as you said, just wasted an extra 30 seconds. And there's only 10 left in the round. I said it was a problem in club. It was a problem in the last round. They're still just caught out by Lagonis and Virtus Pro. They don't just sit on series point. They've got the 6-2 to go with it. I don't know what Virtus Pro was doing. I mean, I, I understand they started top floor, but I would have expected them to push towards the office quicker. 
rather than just play around CCTV the entire time, not trying to put any pressure down horizontally, losing a lot of your members, and then deciding with 30 seconds left, let's hunt the person who's quite literally as far away from the site as you can possibly be inside the building. It just, it doesn't help. And it puts them in a very dire position right now where they are four match points against them with two sides that Liquid have won so far. And of course, this next one, they haven't played yet. So they might take that. But after that, they have an opportunity to keep repeating. Virtus Pro, obviously, as you can see on the screen, are taking their time out, which is about to come to an end. They had no other choice, really. Let's be real, six to two, and things have definitely fallen out of favor as we have seen four rounds in a row now tied either side of the half by a liquid that seems so re-energized into this engagement and into everything that is ahead of them. There is also that memory of, well, that's pretty much how many they tied together the last time round. So at this point, will they make it the same five? Will they go from what was a two to four up to a seven to four, but even more depressing? PP, you need to show up now. It's not the way you want to go out of this game. Of course, we said it before, only first match of their groups. First match of the group. Still three more best of threes to go after this to decide if they are going upper bracket with a bye, just normal upper bracket, lower bracket, or if they get eliminated and sent home. So plenty of time to, to look back at your mistakes and see what went wrong and see what you need to improve on. But you want to start it off with a win. You just want to start it off being on top of that group at the end of the day. The external barbed wire. I mean, if anything shows how aggressive this map can be. It's it, that. External barbed wire is uh, always a fun one. Dan is going to see if they can try and get the Oster. It, it's a pretty known plant and idea. You do have to get some of the vertical control to ensure you don't get C4'd from underneath or a Solus if they're on the board, but they are obviously not. You can also be C4'd from over the top as well. So you got to have someone pitch perfect and ready for it. Volps and Joystick trade a little bit of bullets in an engagement over the top of Square. Nobody is quite able to get the lock out. There's the Oster just utilizing that shield to open it and wants to bait. The first C4 that's already ripped in the hands of well, actually two players. Uh, now just one. I think Palu might have been ready as well. Yeah. I mean, there's three in total, so there, there's plenty of opportunity to try for the deny. And if Dan decides that after the first one pops, it's safe now. Not the case. So it's really going to have to think about that. Now, what if that just blew up? That might actually bait him back into trying to go for a plant or trying to set up that Oster Shield. But also the verticality below has been opened up right now and Laguna's sitting in this corner. He's not gonna be making any noise. Nope. He's just gonna sit there. He's not gonna move. Not gonna move his mouse with the finger on the G button. And he's just gonna wait until he hears the plan go down and then he releases it. And he's got that arc. <laughs> we know it's a team that practices lineups because we've seen it demonstrated throughout the series before. Six to two, Nesk is still waiting for somebody to make an appearance here, but I mean, think about it. Two minutes has passed. What has Virtus Pro got control of here? Well, tell us now. All right. <laughs> they just got that. But as the phone calls go off, they need to get a little bit more. They spot out the player that is playing uh, in one of those sandwich positions. Dan is now trying to find one as well. We'll find Paolo. That's a great pick. That actually opens up an opportunity, but he needs to rotate around as the shield carrier as the reset strikes back. Yeah, strikes back, gets control there onto Joystick. This player's still running out. Shepard hitting and punching bullet holes and always getting underneath and trying to remove the players from those C4 watch positions. But plan A, they're still trying to get the structure behind it. Pasha, he's up here to offer some support. There's one C4 still in the pocket of Volps. They seem to have gone with a quick plan B, which is let's get control of Office, the mirror window at the far end on CC. Towards the back of the hatch, the grenade forces the motion, but the blind gets the end of the kill. Dan, 30 seconds though, and that's the important part to pay attention to. Nesk, where are you going? Probably to cause some trouble as we've got a single player pushing up in the core. The middle of the site, it's always, is the buck underneath, trying to force some attention away, but as Lagonis is tucked on the corner, ready to rock and roll, and Volps still has a C4. Dan is finally going to go for the deploy and the follow through because, well, he has nothing else he can do. Lagonis tucked and rocks the first kill. There's that C4, no shield gone. The players dropped underneath. They've got themselves into a position. It's Lagonis spraying up. They can't get the plot. No, the shotgun the wins the game. And we have a liquid locking it down. Virtus Pro cannot 
find that momentum on border. There was such a painful last couple of seconds to watch in the eyes of Furnace Pro. Right now we can go for the plant. Oh no, we can't. The C4 comes through. They go again. A person down below. They try to dig in deeper afterwards, but the shotgun carries the diffuser carrier and takes them down and liquid with a very, very convincing 7-2 on border. What a return to form after that middle map. It's sort of a sandwich of greatness in the bread and a little bit of missing in the filling but that's your opponent's map and that's the sort of swing that we need to see i guess come from the teams as they grow and we talk about map pool we talk about places they can go to i love the energy that liquid is bringing to bring themselves back into these fights it's definitely been a bit of a back and forth in in, in some parts of this map but in general liquid able to just bring it home after they you know finished up that defensive half it was smooth sailing for them They've sort of made a bit of a statement here. As I said, from their region, because of how good their region has been, they aren't the favorites. There's a lot of con sort of conversations around where they would be, but they're probably still in the top three, the top four, because of the fantastic run they had before. Here, a very strong start, and we'll see what our desk, who are blind, deaf, and dumb, got you manic, we'll say. Yeah, look, fair enough. I'll take that one, Emmy. But we do have someone very important here right now. Palu with a massive victory there. 7-2 win on border. How does it feel to, to bag this one in the first day of SI? Yeah, it's amazing. Like, we are at our home country. There's nothing we can... How can I say? It's the best place you can be, right? <laughs> There's no, no other thing I can say. And we are doing everything we can. Like, we struggle a little bit on the Aragon. But I think, like, I did, don't even know the last time that VP played Barter. I really, like, mm. have no idea. And we got, like, a little surprise. But, yeah, it's a strong map for us, and that's it. Well, that was gonna be my question to you is like, <laughs> obviously they haven't played border. So whatever intel that you might have would have been from, you know, I don't even know how long <laughs> ago. So what was the prep going into border knowing that if you did get to the last map, like what were you guys expecting or what was like kind of the idea? Yeah, actually we weren't expecting to play the third map because our one is also like one of the, our best yeah. maps. We struggle a little bit in some communication and stuff like that. And that's why I think we lost a couple of defense. And going to the third map, like we talked and we reset our mindsets and basically we play like uh, as a screen, let's say, because we didn't have much intel, we have to adapt the middle game and it was basically that. Well, I do have one more question. Go, go, go. So Jesse called you guys frauds because of your guys' performance throughout 2023. I, on the other hand, backed you guys up and said that I have full confidence that it was just a fluke, that, you know, obviously you have bumps in the roads, trying to figure out what you need to do, but coming into SI, you guys were going to be prepared. What was the prep that went from 2023 leading into SI? Actually, last year we had like some issues outside the game. It was like some, a lot of discussions and stuff like that. Yeah. And we kind of lost ourselves in, through the year, you know? Right. We were like, couldn't like do a screen and finish the whole day, like being okay. We always like, we're having a lot of discussions. Yeah. Let's say little fights. <laughs> Not in the way that you think. No, but, yeah, yeah. But I, trust me, I know what it's yeah, like. Yeah, I, know yeah, what it's, no. I know exactly what you're talking about, but I'm and, glad you guys are able to yeah, do that. And like the most, the past weeks, and especially when we didn't classify to the major, mm -hmm. we focus on that. And I think like right now we are so much stronger. We are, like we really build a bond, you know, yeah. between us. And that's I think it's the big, the most important thing in a team. Definitely. If you don't have that. Everything is Fall going apart. to be, yeah. Harlu, the most important question I actually have has nothing to do with this game. It's got to do with SI itself. Obviously, this is a massive event, as yep. you said, in your home country. This is this is your soil. How does it feel to, to be here and, and to be kicking it off in this fashion? You know, do, does it fill you with a, a sense of pride? Yes, of course. Uh, me and Nesk are like playing together for a while mm. and we haven't played any events here in Brazil. All the time, like, the Sao Paulo Pro League, we classified to it, but it hasn't happened. So, like, we lost all the chances. And right now, like, we are here and there's no one who can stop us, you know? I really, I mean, that's probably actually a good question. Who do you see as the biggest contender? Do you feel like you guys are coming into this as the number one? Yeah, I can say that, like, hmm? W7N won the last two majors. The focus on them is on them. Yeah. We are doing 
just ours, you know? Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, that's, you worry that's about you, good. right? Like, yeah. if you worry yeah. about you, that's all you can focus on. Absolutely. Harley, thank you very much for joining thank us. You. Do you have anything you'd like to say to the audience before we let you go? Uh, just, I would like to thank everyone that's streaming for us and keep it. What about your team scan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be nice. Uh, hey. <laughs> you know, uh, go by. <laughs> 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 oh, finally. You, guys. We thank will you. be doing our best in the next matches. Yes, thank you very much, mate. We hope to see you when you get to the main stage. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, what a massive performance for Liquid now. They yeah. move forward, uh, you know, with this under their belt. I think, uh, w you know, we could um and ah as much as we want about Oregon, you know, uh, maybe a, a less convincing match for them. But to come back straight on border and, and like he said, you know, he... They don't even, they were not expecting. Ball. No, and I've said it, they're a dominant team. It goes to show why this team should not be slept on, even if they didn't have the great performance that we've been, you know, used to seeing Liquid. I know you got this face going on, right, Jesse? I know you guys can't see it. He's a little disappointed in, you know, the state <laughs> he made earlier. But no, to give it back to Liquid, I mean, these guys know what it takes. They have what it takes. Even if they lose that map, they did already have their map one. So you shake it off, you reset, you get into the last map, and you play it out the best of your ability. Like they said, they had no clue what they were going to do. They were just going to figure out, and they figured out exactly what BP setups were and took full advantage of that game. Well, it's time to have a look at uh, the highlight of that game that we're now talking about. Let's go ahead and have a look at the Intel play of the game. I think that, you know, contextual... I, I, there's no question that this was going to happen, right? It was a 4K in the very first round of Border. I thought that this was going to set us off on a different tone. Yeah, I think that, I mean, obviously this was a great map overall for Liquid, but I'm happy to uh, sound off about VP and especially Pasha here. I think this guy's absolutely incredible. Those four kills, they all swing into him one at a time, but he lines it up perfectly, right? Yeah. Those are not easy frags to get back to back to back to back. Four kills, playing that anchor spot. I really think Pasha's one of those players who is really slept on, one of the most talented players in all of Siege right now. Very, very impressed by him. Obviously couldn't get the dub today, but I really do think he's a, a, a fantastic player for Virtus Pro and one that is slept on way too hard. I've got to ask you as well, what does it feel like to be thrown under the bus by your... Uh, your that colleague? was a little rough. That was a little rough. But you know what? I said what I said and uh, I was wrong today. I mean, Liquid, they're not frauds. They played very well today and... Uh, that was a good game. <laughs> How about we just leave it there? How about we leave it on the handshake? As you can see, the players are now starting to join us behind the desk. So that means that we're going to start to prepare for a break. We're going to go, I would say, I think it's about 30 minutes. So feel free to take your time. But you do not want to miss this. I'm telling you right now, this is the team that everyone's been talking about all year. This is the match that will set the tone for the rest of SI. It is M80 taking on W7M.